Everybody, it's weird things. Yeah. Dang right. Uh, How's everybody going today? Uh, yay. Yeah. We were talking before we went live about uh, some online discourse stuff, and uh, I think it was such a gift for us to be growing up in a in a time where we all, I think, experienced a lot of the stuff that now happens writ large on web forums and stuff like that, but. They were such a tiny part of overall life that they were so easy to disconnect from, you know, whereas now uh, uh, I think it's just so much of a larger, a larger part of existence, you know, that it, it feels like this is the biggest. Uh, we, we are closer than ever for everybody to feel like now is the time that I need to stand on the right side of history. On, <laughs> but do so in uh 280 characters or less <laughs> sure like, yeah. like, like, but uh, like but whatever whatever it is and, and be it on twitter be it on facebook be it on or even on web forums or blogs or whatever where it's like now the numbers are so much bigger the audiences are so much bigger that now it's like oh no like the world is watching like i need to make sure that like this is the time where i stood up and I was I was here, I made the right decision, and and uh, that, that's, I think it's a noble thought uh, that often leads to maybe a a, a suspension of uh, <laughs> of of uh, uh, some of our other guiding lights. I, you know, so much of it's that, and we get into this before, like the things we think we know because somebody we think is reliable said it to us and that way my outrage is justified. Like there was the whole thing about like the video of the woman in the seat, the airplane seat and the guy punching the back of the seat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I actually like, don't, don't, don't know this one. Oh, this was, this was like, it. yeah, this was like a big national, a national story. Um, uh, so with this woman, you, you see a video of this woman recording herself and the man in the seat behind him he's in the very last lower of the seat doesn't recline and he's just punching the back of her seat repeatedly and uh in the the story and again and like i can't couch these things because there's been so many times we go oh this is what happened and like we don't know what happened yet we we have different sides of the story but apparently you know she said that you know she had reclined her seat he was angry that she, you know or that he was upset from her point of view he was upset that he she did he didn't she didn't ask permission and so he kept punching the seat, and she recorded this, and then she had a bad altercation with the flight attendants and whatnot. And then people were like, oh, whose side are you on on this? And I'm like, well, that's a dumb question, because we don't know anything. I mean, they could be two improv actors from Moscow, for all we know. So even that doing that, like, who's right, who's wrong? And I'm kind of frustrated to some of the people I follow for even putting that out there, because it creates the problem. that we're asked to be, take a side, and we don't know. Clearly, the guy looks at the wrong to me. 
you know, and and then he came out and said, and they said, well, people, a lot of people, you know, people side of the woman, and they said, well, when he she put her seat back, it knocked over his drink, so he's angry. I'm like, I'm like, well, that doesn't change that for me. Like, so what? Like, like I've you, I've been flying for, you know, thirty some, you know, years. I've never had anybody ask if they can recline their seat, and I never get upset when somebody reclines their seat in front of me because. I don't need that space, you know. It would be nice to have it, but I'm not going to do anything with it, you know. But uh, anyhow, I don't know. I don't know. But everybody was outraged. Hey, uh, one last thing on the subject of outrage. <clears throat> and I don't know if maybe this is even a, a weird things, uh, thing to talk about. But um, uh, we did on Friday, uh, you know, we have a hacker friend of ours that uh, has a, you know, it's a fairly popular thing among hackers to have a reprogrammable RFID chip in, in, in your hand so that you can use it for various purposes. Um, what do you suppose the comments look like, Andrew, to the re response to that video? Um, all pro, which is great. <laughs> There, there is a fair bit of like, oh wow, this is cool. Uh, I, I, I could see the functional uses to having a rewritable scratch pad, uh, digital scratch pad on my body. Uh, uh, and he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. That's the first one. How dumb could people be? That was 48 minutes ago. Well, it's fitting that the modern rogue would try to swindle us into the benefit uh, of hackable RFID chips, roll eyes. That was 49 minutes ago. Um, just <laughs> looking at a lot, all the thumbs up. Lots of people willing to loose their soul. The Bible warning written over 2,000 years ago. That was 52 minutes ago, uh, 56 minutes you ago. You see the Bible section on 5G. It's really, really harsh on that, too. Uh, on, on Wait, on what? Uh, 5G, you know. Oh, 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 the, uh, <laughs> the wireless standard. Got it. I was like, is that a forum? I, I, I don't know what that is. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, um, hundreds and probably going to end up being thousands of deleted comments off of, off of the, the channel. Did you, now get, you know your audience up in a Bible forum or something? Cause I know that I do know that that is a thing like that, that, uh, that RFID chips, I, you know, are something that, that, uh, a, a certain religious crowd has reacted very strongly to, but I, I wonder if this it, is the modern crowd or something else uh i think it's the majority of our crowd um if i were to guess uh you know we we attract a younger demographic my guess is an awful lot of young people say the things that their parents say and they see the stimulus and it elicits the response and you know maybe uh i mean yeah <laughs> uh, youtube forum uh comments probably not the best p place to uh you know dissect the history of how that particular book was written and how you know yeah how do you explain the council of nicaea to anyone who's willing to listen <laughs> in, in the youtube forums youtube youtube forums are like the mosh pit of the internet you know <laughs> you know uh, you can watch what's going on there from afar, but if you get too close to the stage, you're like, oh, geez, what's going on here? Like, what are these angry guys? A lot of these angry guys are just working out their aggression here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty wild. So anyway, uh, uh, oh, uh, my favorites. Oh, 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 here's the I, other thing is it's not just people, uh, fundamentalist Christians. It's also you get the tinfoil hat conspiracy folks. Uh, who are convinced that it's like, wait, way to get the government to track you. And I'm like, oh, did you not yeah. even watch the episode where we explained how the range on these are garbage and how if you're going to be worried, be worried about your face and your your phone on you at all times. And then people are like, uh, uh, this is just going to be just like the Chinese social credit system. I'm like, yeah, you mean the one that doesn't involve a chip at all? <laughs> the one that goes entirely by your face and your phone? Yeah. yeah, people, am I right? Yeah. Man, Anyone what is he doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the idea of having a trackable device on you at all times is really creepy, <laughs> and I can't imagine how anybody would. Yeah, it's funny. I wonder how many of those comments were written on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> With biometrics. <laughs> exactly, right? Oh, sorry, this just in. Five minutes ago, 
quote, also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, well, I guess it really depends on, on on the numbers, but I would not be shocked. Like, because sometimes, you know, like iTrix links would, would just, they would find their way into forums and, and, and that's where you would get a lot of the, the, the like, scripture heads. Yeah. May, may, you guys want to do a show? <laughs> yeah. Do it. You guys ready? Yep, yep. All ready, right. Ready, ready. Counting in in three, <clears throat> two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody. The one constant to this show, Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Mr. Brian Breshwood. Uh, yo, buddy, yo, buddy, yo. That's a new hot catchphrase. Put that on a on a patch on a T-shirt. Go to the trademark office right now. <laughs> um, Cafe Press It or whatever they do now. I don't know. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, um, so today we had some cool space news, Some, uh, some maybe some better news since we've had some disappointing stuff coming out of the Boeing uh, Starliner program. But some good news is, Today, uh, Blue Origin opened up or uh, started their factory in Huntsville, Alabama, which they're going to be making their uh, their uh, BE4 engines, and the other engines are making big engines there, which are going to be go you know be powering some of the next generation rockets. So that's pretty exciting, and hiring like 300 people to work in the facility there. And and so these are all still the single stage, not to orbit, but single stage uh, to suborbit. Well, these engines will actually could be used to power their. Um, reusable rockets that, that Blue Origin's working on. So these are going to go work towards, first, they're selling engines to other uh, rocket com uh, to rocket companies to use them instead of, let's say, the Russian engine. So the BE-4s will be used for those. And then the BE-4s will actually be used in their, I think the next one they want to do is the um, the new Glenn rocket, which they're building, which will be the one that will be their, orbital, their first orbital class rocket. And I believe these will be the same engines that power that. So that's exciting. It, it's nice to see, you know, Blue Origin, you know, making more hardware and getting stuff out there. That's so, great. You know, yeah, it's exciting news. Um, I mean, just, I just, yeah, we just want, we want everybody to succeed because it's, it's like rooting for internet companies in the early 1990s. Like, you want everybody to succeed because it's going to be way bigger than this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, other news was uh, SpaceX had a launch today, yet another Starlink launch where they put, I think, another 60 satellites into orbit, and that went off this morning. Um, the booster, this would have been their 50th landing if they landed it. But it landed in the ocean and it went for a swim. So, <laughs> yeah, I think but, they said uh, like it, like it, it, it was a soft landing. It wasn't like a big old yeah. disaster, but uh, it looked like yeah. their GPS was a little bit confused. Yeah, I can. Uh, sometimes what will happen is that uh, it's not necessarily a GPS issue, but they have the 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 amount of fuel they put in it, or for some of the thrusters when they've missed it before, it's been actually because like 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 the you know one of the thrusters didn't have any fuel left in it, and it couldn't like divert itself to where it's supposed to go and it just falls yeah, almost there guys and you're like what what um but man they make so many of those boosters now it's insane so, <laughs> yeah they're like good riddance just, i already have three other ones Psh, that one's the, yeah. <laughs> so what if it was exactly. mint in box yeah now, um, yeah so what what is the target for the first generation of starlink satellites like like three thousand four thousand units I think that's the number. I think that's the number. So this takes us to Which... uh, three, uh, 300. And uh, I believe, depending on where you were, uh, man, one of these days I want to get up like at crazy in the morning and actually try to catch, you know, that, that, that array of all of them just as they deploy. Mm -hmm. It ends up looking like a bizarre ass, uh, you know, moon brightness line of dots in the sky. Yeah, and that's what, you know, one of the things that had astronomers concerned is they would go see when the, when the satellites first deploy, they're all close together, as you explained, in that little train, and it's very easy to see. And then they go further out and they deploy, and they're harder to see, but the, when they first launch, they're very visible. And and that was that's one of the reasons why they're frustrating is because SpaceX is saying, like, oh, well, eventually they're going to be harder to see, but people go, no, I see it. And it's like, well, it, they're still in that process, and Musk has said that each satellite, each generation of satellite, the albedo is going to decrease to the point that they, they, you know, they don't want the astronomy community hating them, so they're doing what they can do to figure out how to make them, you know, less prominent. But SpaceX now has more satellites in the sky 
than any other entity in the world, including like foreign governments wow. or U.S. government. And and you know you 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 can't imagine that they will be in that position forever, right? Like you know since they are uh, literally just the the conduit to get to space, you would imagine that that uh, you know may, maybe they always will, but maybe there will be other. I mean. Other reasons that people are putting up these these satellites. Yeah, the uh, you know it used to be Elon Musk's talking point to girls was, "Do you ever think about electric cars?" <laughs> and now yeah. it's going to be, "Do you know how many satellites I have?" <laughs> so that works. Um, uh, and this was some really cool news that came out last week. It was surprising. Remember how NASA? We talked about how they had let go of. Uh, William Gerstenmeier, he'd been head of manned spaceflight operations for NASA for years, right? Was sort of a legend of running the human exploration part. And NASA, there had been, I guess, you know, between him and Bolden, there was some sort of a, a disagreement on, uh, you know, as far as like, hey, you know, how, what the pay should be, how NASA should be. And so um, they let him go. And that was sort of a big controversial sort of deal that, that uh, you know, he was let go. But um, he just got hired. He just and he was a guy that was going to get hired by you know. It wasn't hard to imagine somebody wanting to hire him. Do you guys know who hired him? Uh, uh, I do because somebody texted me about it. Uh, uh, but but yeah, no, he is now at at SpaceX, which certainly bolsters their uh, a push to have manned uh, craft. Right, like this is this is maybe the most uh, uh, important hire to bridge the gap between. This is a startup that is great at creating rockets, and this is literally the person that if you were to write down a blue sky dream to to bring somebody on to to you know have SpaceX transition to manned flight, he's the guy. Uh, for, yeah, and let me let me just clarify. I meant to say Brian Stein. Brian Stein handled the ones that are different. And Bolden was a previous NASA administrator. For those of you kicking count. Sorry, uh, Brian, go I, ahead. I, I am so so sorry. Uh, remind me what was the controversy about him being let go? Well, he had been an institution forever, and so for shifting him out of pushing him out of NASA was, you know, considered was people were shocked and surprised by this. And, and the inside was that he had his pace at which he wanted to work it at, and and that that there and we don't really know the full reasons why, but the idea was that basically, Bridenstine was you know trying to make a very nimble, fast moving NASA, and they may have butted heads or whatever, and you know, and Gerstmann had a ton of power in there, and so. You know, sometimes that can be hard when you want to change things when people are going to defer to like, well, I'm going to defer to this other guy, even though he's your subordinate. Don't know the real reasons, but we knew it was he had been an institution there as, as, as you know, having been involved there for years. But um, and well loved, well loved like that. You know, he had you got congrats, you know, the head of the Russian space agency has dealt with him for years and, and you know, was excited to see he's got a new you know, where he's ended up now and whatnot. So um, I think sounds like a great move. On SpaceX, because once they want, because carrying people, it's, it's different than than Facebook satellites that blow up and it becomes punchlines, you know. And so, I think from the surface, it sounds like it's a great idea. Boy, that's a know. that's a really uh, wise distinction where it's like we will chuckle at payloads blowing up, but uh, you cannot do that with human payloads. Yeah. Yep. So and it, it signals that SpaceX is taking this very seriously. Took the guy that was the top guy in the world for human spaceflight and managing different programs, who was some people thought was maybe kind of anti new space, maybe was more let's just keep doing it the way we're doing. I don't know his real positions on that. Those the perception of it and saying, well, we're going to bring him here and we're going to let him, you know, help us figure out how to make sure that we're really where we need to be. Do, and also, I, like for branding, that's that's what SpaceX wants because if, if there is a knock on SpaceX, uh, either from their competitors or from skeptics, it is that they go too fast and that they're trying to move this thing at a at a pace that is unreasonable, and that's why we're going to get dicey uh, safety records. And if this guy was was the slow it down partner uh, voice in in the room at NASA, then that seems to be a you know filling in a, a at least a public relations uh, a issue it seems like kind of a, a perfect time that, that really does yeah. sort of pose the question though of just like how if he was not happy at nasa and wanted to, and wanted nasa to slow down and nasa said get out of here slowy mcslowerson like how's that going to be a fit at spacex but hopefully they got him plugged into the right role where you know everybody will be happy yeah yep yeah. 
Completely agree. So, all right, you guys ready for a mystery? Oh, indeed. Hot damn. All right, first, I need you guys to put on your paleontologist detective hats. <laughs> Mine's just one of those uh, explorer's hats, only with uh, brass goggles and uh, three extra lenses that I can swap out at any time. Brian, you're going to need those lenses. It was a great choice. Good, 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 good. What about you, Justin? What equipment do you got? I've got my fedora. <laughs> Requires the international sign of a paleontologist detective, uh, m'lady. Uh, uh, what about your henchman, Bryce? Oh, uh, I've got on um, my Thinking invisible cat. sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce and Bryce has a trench coat with pockets filled with all sorts of stuff you guys might need, right? Yeah. Sure. That's right. Yeah. We call him the old Tuna walking sandwich. utility belt. Shink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. whoa, Tuna you just pulled out right a utility here. belt. That's very useful. <laughs> yeah, my utility belt has utility belt pockets. Everything else just flatters to the ground. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, we're going to step inside a cave here. I've got a mystery for you here. Possibly a new species. I'm calling it spider dino. Oh, okay. Spider, spider it, dino. Uh, yeah, spider. It's my uh, name. I'm not, uh, I'm not a official paleontologist. I mean, but I tell you, I... I've watched enough Discovery Channel. I know what's going on. Uh, uh, look, I mean, who am I to criticize your marketing? But this does sound like a a, 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 a place where they serve flies to hungry spiders at the Spider Dino. <laughs> a Spider Diner? Um, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying the neon sign out front was a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Spider Dino. Hi, I'm Flo. What can I help you with? <laughs> the doo-wop, I, I think, is what's maybe <laughs> misleading people. <laughs> I'm well, very hungry for a melt boat. <laughs> well, follow me into the cave. Follow me into the cave. Got it. We're following you into the cave. <laughs> All right. We're in the cave. We're in the cave. We're in the cave. Everybody here? 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 Yes. Yes. yes, yes. How come I don't know what that echo? That echo. <laughs> well, you also sound very far away. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> not. I'm like, all right, guys, so what do you think? What do you think? Explain that. Uh, uh, what am I looking at? Oh, is it this? Or are we showing on this? Oh, wait, let me turn on the light. Okay. Because <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is like some advanced role playing where it's like you, you don't even have a dungeon master. <laughs> right, here. Oh, no, take my face. I'm making the spooky face with my flashlight. T take a look over here. Oh. No, it's like I'm, the I'm aiming the light at the ceiling. Uh, at the ceiling. At the ceiling. Okay, so there uh, looks to be, I, I, I um. The like chicken foot concert well reverse uh they look like reverse footprints uh uh footprints extruded outward from the surface yeah. oh yeah 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 but but they look yeah, like those like something's trying to claw out of mm -hmm. a cocoon of some sort like to, to give you a visual representation of, of what it appears to be that there's some kind of three-toed creature that uh that that the the feet are kind of sticking out i mean to be honest imagine imagine a chicken walks across soft clay and then you pour in plaster and then you peel all of that off and you have these a negative these well positives is what these would be because the negative would be the foot yeah, sure. the foot impressions in there so so you got like it looks like a stone positive of chicken footprints but you're saying that's when you say but the, we're looking up roof, right now our neck is straight strange. above us Straight above us, and those are two hundred million old foot, two hundred million old fo footprints. Those are theropod footprints. Those are dinosaur prints. Ooh, hold friend. on, hold on. I, I I put on my brass goggles and I zoom in. So so, uh, uh, and as I do, I annoyingly say enhance, enhance, <laughs> <laughs> and I look closer, and I say, gentlemen, is it possible that this? I I turned I turned turn to um the rest of the gang and I say. Who could tell me about this cave? How is this cave formed? Well, it's a cave. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> All right, here's yeah. my theory. Caves okay. very often are stone that uh, has something eat away caves out of it. So what if, uh, and sometimes there are different layers of sediment. So what if at one point this was a soft clay that got impressions in it, and then 
other uh, dirt or matter came in, like maybe a landslide or whatever, formed a new layer. And then over time, because it's two different types of stone, maybe a slightly acidic water washed away the limestone in this very cave where we're standing, and we're left with a stone positive of these dinosaur footprints up above us. Or it was a big old chicken. Or a it big old chicken. It could have been a big chicken with very small feet. Yeah, very tiny feet. So the biggest chicken you could ever imagine. It stepped so hard into the ground above that it left these two footprints. Actually, could that's it prime. be? Could it? Could yeah. it? Uh, this would. This would be weird. This. This. I'm gonna say this because I've started to say this, but I know that this is very stupid. But it almost looks like there's like a secondary, like especially on this left footprint, there's almost like a secondary, like ring two around it. Sets of footprints. <laughs> Bryce, but where was the second chicken uh, when there was only one set of footprints? <laughs> well, that was when the first chicken was carrying you. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think me, me thinks we've solved the case. <laughs> <laughs> well, a separate other thing, I'm realizing the problem with this picture is I have no sense of scale. There, there, there's nothing in there that I can hook my brain around. Um, it is uh, How many inches wide? Hold on, I, I flip through my lenses and go to the ruler lens and I try to get a sense of how big from from back of the foot to the front toe mm -hmm. each of those are. I'm probably like three inches or so or something. Okay, so it is inches. it is pretty um, nice. about chicken sized. Three, three inches. So uh the article was headlined. The, the, the headline for the article was the um let me get the exact title solved the mystery surrounding dinosaur footprints footprints on a cave ceiling ceiling um apparently uh the mystery surrounding dinosaur footprints on a cave ceiling in central queensland has been solved after more than half a century for 50 years this was a mystery nobody had a solution nobody only, was sure what it was according to this article only 50 years yeah that doesn't yeah. seem like a long time to have known about this if these are very old uh, oh no! Yeah, I guess I guess people had caves before they even had science. Yeah, <laughs> now that I think about for it, quite a while now. <laughs> well, I'm gonna explain to you guys. Well, actually, Brian, what yes. we now know was a dinosaur walked across a thing like a clay or something like that, and then there was a sedimentary layer on top of it, and then the layer <laughs> below it dissolved away, <laughs> leaving the caves on the footprint. On the yes, ceiling. yes. I don't think in the entire history yeah. of weird things yeah. I've ever so perfectly landed a thesis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got <laughs> Standing belly clap from both. Oh, this is the best. Oh. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> You've done it, Brian. You've finally done it. Took us 10 years to nail one of these. Like, from the very, very, from the jump you had this one. It took us a decade to do it, but we finally got there. Folks, that's it. Thank you for listening to Weird Things. We'll never do it again. Oh, man. I'm going to ask you a question, Brian. Um, did your experience in skepticism and stuff and seeing how people would look at reversed images like craters and think they're like the – knowing when you see the thing, it could be inverse outvert, you know, you know invert, you know uh, – uh, uh, you, you, you know, know what it really was was my experience in magic making prosthetics because because for the skewer through your tongue trick I had to take an alginate uh, impression of a tongue and then create a stone positive and then from that you make a silicone mold and then in that you put gelatin or whatever and that is going back what 15 oh geez i'm old 20, 20 years and uh and then again we've covered it a few times in various uh stuff on like modern rogue so so i think uh i i wish i could attribute it to any kind of deductive reasoning but instead it's just purely that looks like that thing i've seen several times i want to be i want to be like in the uh, I'm gonna I want to be the scientist there with Brian next to me. Like, oh, this is a guy. He does YouTube videos, you know, <laughs> magic videos and stuff. Well, over here we have a mystery we haven't solved for 50 years. How did the footprints end up on the oh, ceiling? Well, what's funny is I was already because... happy just that that I solved a weird things bit. It didn't occur to me that this has been puzzling scientists for 50 years. <laughs> According to the article, according to the article, but yes, according to the article, this is in, it's fizz.org. Which uh, apparently had been a big, uh, big mystery, you know. Oh, that's um, great. Uh, so, 
Congrats, sir. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, why, uh, yeah. don't we, why don't we all celebrate this victory, this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity by heading on over to support the show. Indeed, Brian. Patreon.com slash Weird Things is where you can support this very podcast. Head on over there right now. Give us a little bit of scratch, you know, uh, uh, whatever you got in your in your pocket right now. And, and folks, uh, you can help make sure that this show continues to run each and every week. Get a custom RSS feed. Make sure that you get these episodes earlier than anybody else. It's so easy. Patreon.com slash weird things. Um, yeah. And we can solve other mysteries. We could get a van. We could go out there and, you know, make things happen. Uh, there has been a new and our, 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 our Beetlejuice, Beetlegeist uh, update. Um, as far as is it going to go Nova, which I understand this is going to be a continuing series we're going to do and update you on the condition of it going Nova, which means it could take 100,000 years. But uh, <laughs> in the last like week or so, there have been some more, apparently been some more fluctuations on it and has some people excited like, ooh, maybe, maybe we're going to see something. Maybe we're going to see this thing, you know, go Nova. Do, do we know what percentage of difference we've seen over the last few years with, I mean, it looks like, I don't know, to just squint at it from... December to January, I mean, maybe maybe a 40% uh, increase or, or sorry, a, a decrease on there. I mean, that's that's really a huge difference. And as it's a matter a of fact, uh, I got mixed up and thought that Rigel was Beetlejuice when I was looking at Orion the other day, just because Rigel is so much brighter than Beetlejuice. Uh, and and uh, uh, I remember Brant was asking, hey, which one is that one? I was like, oh, that's got to be Beetlejuice because that's so, so bright. And then uh, later I, I double checked and it's like, nope, Beetlejuice is the shoulder, not the foot. And uh, and you could see with the naked eye how much uh, dimmer it is. Yeah, it's like 36% of its brightness. That's so crazy. That's massive. Yeah. Uh, the question in the chat is, how safe are we? And I believe everything I've read has indicated that uh, it could go full on supernova and uh, we would be far away and just get a spectacular uh, view. <clears throat> Technically, we will be safer because there will be more light at night to drive by. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly more light at night once it goes nova for us to drive by. But yeah, it's not. it's not a... It's not one of those colossal super ones that, like, uh, you know, send out so much radiation that it, you know, kills off half the things on the planet. Or, or a gamma um, burst that's just going to sterilize us, like could happen with a much closer star. Yeah, so it's it'll be a little, a lot more brightness in the sky, and apparently, if it goes, then, you know, we'll have a little more light at night. Which I think we can up the all actual... do is a little more light in our lives. Thank you, Beetle guys. <laughs> Once it goes, uh, when, but yeah, when it goes, go, I believe in it. Go supernova, live your dream. <clears throat> and I, I apologize. Did we do a totally unrelated now? Did we do the the show the video of the upres version of the train pulling into the station? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're oh, talking. Good. You're talking about the original. <laughs> The uh, the the black and white film that had people panicked in the audience because they had never seen a moving picture of a dangerous object coming towards them. Well, remember that the promoter said had people panicked in the audience. Sure, there sure, no actual sure. accounts of anybody being really panicked. But um, yeah. so there was the, the 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 first like public movie was as, as Brian points out was the train pulling into the station, right? Because it was neat, like you're watching a motion picture of this thing happening, and people had had like lantern shows and all. There was a lot of stuff prior to that, you know, of watching projected images and stuff and moving projected images using different techniques. But this classic film, somebody went in and took a, uh, an AI algorithm that was, that was designed, you know, trained on tons and tons of up res versions of images. And they made a up res, like a 4k version of this. All right. Pause this before which, you show any more. Uh, all I can picture is uh, smash cut to the polar express. <laughs> like that's, that's what I want to <laughs> believe is what's going to happen. And just, yeah. Tom Hanks out front. Uh, well, I mean, so, so I imagine oh, that even even as there was, you know, uh, uh, precursors to this, this would be similar to like when you saw HD for the first time, mm -hmm. like when like like oh oh god, that's a totally different experience. Like I I now can experience media in a, in a, in, a, in a totally different way. This this was obviously 
I mean, it's still famous for for a reason. But uh, if you've never seen it, it normally, I mean, it's it's this grainy, you know, old ass uh, film thing. So so here we go. This is the the first time I've seen it in 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 actual 4K. In 60 frames per second. Oh jeez. Oh my God! It looks like a oh Spanish telenovela. Yeah. Oh my God! It really does. Yeah. It is astonishingly real and much smoother than I would have expected. I mean, it's not... Um, you're, you're, the 60 frames per second is more noticeable, I think, than the higher resolution. Well, you got to go watch the original one, though. No, we're, we're, sure. We're no, no, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, that, that, no the higher resolution is, is insane. I mean, just in the, in the reflections alone, it is uh, uh, so uh, noticeably different. And, and the... The faces, really, it's like the only thing that you can see that that shows that this is archived and not something that you would, you know, shoot now that it's not like a Westworld thing is uh, uh, the fact that it still has these stops and starts that are more noticeable mm -hmm. in 60 frames than it would be. Uh, well, I, I think that's an artifact of how we're watching it, because when I watched it, so, yeah, pull up the original version or... Yeah, they're showing a comparison. So the the, the source versus the right hand is. Or it's hard yeah, to the, if you pull the right the hand looks version. like it's uh, what maybe twelve frames per second or so, uh, yeah. fairly herky jerky, maybe fifteen. Yeah. Uh, but even then, uh, I I didn't realize that the source material was of even that quality. I th I thought it would have been much worse. So look at look at uh, the and I th I don't oh, I'm trying to remember which. Because I think they they used a different version, so we're looking at the original version, because that was a restored clip we looked on the on that that source one. This is the original version right now. Yeah, that's dude. where that came. It um, we're watching. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, sorry, sorry, Bryce. Uh, who, sorry. who are you gesturing at? Uh, does anybody? Nobody can see this at home. They don't know what 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 the difference. Yeah, is. Yeah, I'm trying to describe. There's all sorts of artifacts on the screen. You're watching a lot of you know the the dirt and stuff like this, which that whole algorithm got rid of. It's a very shaky frame because the way the uh, the film popped around the you know inside the sprockets, and it's a very big difference. Now, there is a upresed or upscaled, colorized version out there too. See if you can find it, Bryce. Yeah, the um, uh, the big thing I almost want to say that uh, the motions, the swaying, the way they're walking, and all that stuff doesn't look. Having just watched that upscaled 4K 60 frames per second version, none of the people look like they're moving anything different uh, if, or any differently. Uh, I, I would say that the bulk of the transformative effect is that same, uh, ju just that 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 same effect with any kind of frames per second. We're just uh, 28 or 24 frames per second, or or what looks like you know 12 here. Uh, it just just seems more dreamier and 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 stranger. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's it's interesting. I I I'm actually a little bit kind of less impressed now that I see how good the original was. Well, oh, you, no, I, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I mean, there are things that I, I mean, I've seen that before. I never noticed that the train was that shiny and I didn't realize it until I watched this upscale version that like now it is so clear that what you are seeing is a reflection before I just probably wrote it off as like artifacting uh, but but just the the makeout of the the people and the the specifics on the train itself. I mean, again, this just looks like something that you would see. Oh, as, here's the, as the in, the intro to Westworld. Let me send Bryce. I'm going to send you the 4K color version. That was just oh, so the they did one both 4K with... and color. And yeah. then get ready for 4K colorized 3D. Also, we replaced exactly. everything with computer renderings. Also, the train's now a hoverboard. Get ready. Oh, that's uh, that's interesting. It's very, very desaturated on the on the colorized version. Is uh, this my? I I just found this. I don't know if this is the one. That's there are, not it. There are that's a couple not, of colorized right. versions. Of yeah. No, this is the what the 4K one that was converted. Um. Uh, that may be one of the versions. Yeah, because what's happened is they keep improving these algorithms, and one one of the ways they train them is they take like paper, they'll take a couple shots from different scenes and hand color it, and then go tell the algorithm this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, and so uh, you know, it's it's colorizing algorithms are getting better, and it's the more data they train with, the better and better they get. And 
you know, but just the the up resing and whatnot, I thought was just phenomenal. What it does with you know with bad footage with all sorts of artifacts, that was a big thing there. So, um, oh yeah, here's one with a with a colors that that pop a lot more. Still doesn't. Yeah. Well, oh man, no. Now now it's it's really fairly remarkable. You get this, uh, but again, since it's colorized, we know this is all after the fact, and and people sort of making best guesses about. What colors different things well, some were? Some of these are algorithmic awards, not a guess. It's well, I mean, it's the system trying to guess, and and you see flashes of stuff there where it gets a little bit like it, the, the the computer doesn't know what to do with it. But, um, you know, it's still like I said, it, these things are only going to get better. Yeah, no, that's remarkable. It. Uh, what do you think in terms of? We know that when it comes to a lot of technologies. There are military and surveillance technologies that are far ahead of what consumer level technologies are able to do. But then there's original research. And so uh, there's a temptation to believe like, see, if we're just now seeing this, how long has the government had this? But I, I wonder whether or not the government does much original invention or just technical doubling down of, of what academia is figuring out when it comes to, you know, neural networks and AI generate procedurally generated stuff. They, they certainly, the gap used to be much bigger between like government hardware and consumer hardware, but like things like with the smartphone wars and stuff like that, you know, you had a lot of a closing in the gap, but you can still do, if you wanted to make, let's say a, you know, a hundred megapixel chip, you know, imaging chip, the government can do that. You know, anybody can do that because you just pay, you, you build a special fab facility to do that. And things like that are still happening. And as far as neural networks and things like this is, we don't know how many people work for indirectly, but work on government funded projects and black books projects. The budgets for those things are huge, just phenomenally huge. And for the longest time, if you had a computer science degree, your best bet was to go work for, you know, the, the NSA or some related, com you know, entity. But now that's changed. Um, what's the gap? I don't know. Like, every time we see some breakthrough system come out, like with, you know, voice recognition or deep fakes or stuff, and you read at the papers, you find out the biggest limiting factor is being able to afford the amount of computational time, how much money you could spend on developing a better algorithm for that, which means that, you know, there are... Government employ government researchers and stuff working on projects with millions of dollars of budgets able to outspend your average academic. So I don't know. It could be anything. It, it could be because sometimes you really just can't throw money at it and solve the problem. Yeah. No. You know, and that's the the scary thing is we worry about like what are the Chinese doing? You know, to some extent with the Russians or the Russians have a much smaller budget, but like that's why people worry about sort of the AI wars of like what's going to happen between the Chinese and the United States as far as where we're going to these technologies. And the new budget proposal increases the amount of funding for AI research because uh, that could be, you know, that that could be the last, you know, whoever loses that, you know, there are no more winners. So scary. Fun yeah. times. Oh, yeah. Way to go, everywhere. train interstation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's stop now. Stop now. Um, but you can't. You can't. So you guys want to do picks? Yeah, I got a pick for you. Saw this movie. Some of y'all might have heard of it. It's a Korean film called Parasite. Oh, you finally yeah. saw it. I finally saw it. Uh... Where are we on on uh, on on any kind of description of the plot? Are we are we at a point where I can make a very oblique description of 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 the plot? They have re-released this movie into theaters, and I think people are still enjoying it for the first time. So I'd say maybe keep it vague. Yeah, but also you had your opportunities. You no, they had your didn't. windows. <laughs> we ain't gonna hide how Wizard of Oz ends. Guess what? The witch melts. I'm no, sorry. I'm not, this is not about. I think this is not about the ending. This is about the premise, because uh, there was such secrecy around the premise that I was not expecting it to be as straightforward as it was. I thought that it was something that maybe took place in alternate timelines or, or had some other uh, uh, science fiction component to it. Uh, but I was, I was pleasantly thrilled by uh, uh, the, the, the general premise of it. And I very much enjoyed the ingenuity of our characters. 
I, I, I liked Parasite a lot. And at some point, when I'm legally allowed by way of the decorum of the internet, I would like to announce that I have another title that I think would have gotten me into the theaters to see it immediately upon its initial release if it were called that and not Parasite. But eventually, I'll say it. So at some point when nobody cares to yell at me, just tap me on the shoulder and say, Justin, what would you like Parasite to have been titled? Uh, 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 Justin, oh. hey, Justin, I want to know, what would you like Parasite to have been titled? This scamming ass family. <laughs> it was all I said repeatedly as the movie was going on. I just kept <laughs> slapping my hands together and screaming, this scamming ass family. I'll kick you out of the Alamo if we keep doing that. There was, a, yeah, there was definitely a moment two thirds of the way through the movie that I'm like, this is adorable. I should have brought my kids. And then I remembered it's a, it's a, uh, who the director was and what all of his previous projects have been like. And then I was like, uh, oh, it's probably not going to keep being adorable, is it? And it wasn't. No. No. I, uh, it, I, you know, because of the, the Jessica rhyme, you know, was a popular meme. I think you're okay with that title because it's kind of clear there what's going on. Yeah. 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 You know, um, but I thought it was, I thought it was great. Uh, uh, I think that if it's if, if there's going to be the first movie to win uh, Best Picture as a as a foreign film, it was uh, uh, you know I don't think it's to me far less controversial than let's say like the artist winning you know <laughs> like a silent movie winning uh, a best uh, best pick. So uh, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, so all right, I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I'm a big fan of his. I think he does neat stuff. You know, every time I see one of his movies, I'm delighted by his creativity and where he goes with it. I'm still like was just in love with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But you know, I I watch Parasite. Like, oh, let me see it. Like, oh, it's good, really good, really liked it. Yeah, so. yeah, I, yeah, I, I got to admit, I I would have I would have bet money that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood would have made it. The only reason I could think that it didn't win is because uh, Quentin had already gotten his due, and and Scorsese had already gotten his due, and you know, it's I think it it is an inherently political award by for mm -hmm. and of Hollywood, and I think that. In the war between self-congratulation and uh, 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 not giving, not overly giving the same entities the same awards, I think in this case they wanted to do something different. And remember that the vote, because you vote on, there are five films, and because of the way that works is nobody has to get a majority, you just have to beat somebody else. And so you might have had a lot of people like, they like something else and Once Upon a Time was their second, but Parasite had enough no, I really like this, and I wanted to go there. And that's sort of the, you know, not that we have, haven't have heard enough about voting already so far, but that's sort of one of the, the peculiarities of a system like that where it can be, you know, where you look at, like, how they try to do other systems, like, what's your first choice, second choice, third choice? Oh, that's I don't right. Quite I, know. They, I forgot that they do rank choice voting for this, uh, which some I, I think they're trying out in Maine here in the in the United States and has been prevalent in Ireland for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, there was more than five. There was nine nine nominees for, oh, right. for best picture which, which uh, spreads it out even further uh but yeah apparently the betting the betting favorite was 1917 yeah. uh so so once upon a time which i thought i also you know but when i saw it i'm like all right well quentin's never gotten best picture mm -hmm. this obviously has a breakout performance where they want to reward brad pitt but i think maybe that's where people wound up making their peace with it is that Brad Pitt was the guy who who basically got to bask in the glory of that movie, whereas they were going to give it to uh, either the big sprawling war epic 1917 or uh, make history with, uh, with with Parasite, which came from behind and won. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Any other picks? Uh, I got a pick. Uh, did I already talk about the book un -F word Yourself? Did we talk about that here on the show? No, I don't think you talked about it. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the author's name is Gary John Bishop. I'll, I'll get it corrected here momentarily. But uh, 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 un F word yourself is fantastic. It's um, uh, it's a explanation of just how important uh, so-called self-talk is. You know, the little uh, yeah, Gary John Bishop is the guy's name. 
Uh, and if you're able to play just a snippet of his voice, he's got this great Scottish accent. When when I first listened to it, I was like, who is this reader? And then I realized it's the author. And as he gets more passionate, it gets better and better. Uh, here, take a listen to how he sounds. And the quality of your life. Professor Will Hart of the University of Alabama conducted four experiments in which participants either recalled or experienced a positive negative or neutral event so he goes on and there are times he gets really passionate where essentially he he talks a lot about stoicism you know a bit of if you're familiar with marcus aurelius stuff and also the negative self-talk that from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed runs through our head uh and he talks about like (laughs) he'll get to a point where he's just like uh yeah you're stuck in a loop what what's the f word in point it's like if if you're not gonna be happy why don't you do this and and so what's been interesting is as I listen to this and the sequel, stop doing that S word. Uh, he, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, his voice has become my new self talk. When I find myself drifting into, oh, but I'm a piece of garbage, I'm a piece of whatever, and he's just like, what are you doing? If you're not, look above you. It's a beautiful blue sky day. You're walking around on seven acres. If you can't feel good about this, why are you even doing it? Uh, it's, it's been really, really great. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. His stuff is good. It's got that, that brutal slap of, of, of sincerity and honesty to it. I, I awesome. kind of feel like a little bit of uh, Mike Myers, you know, his like, you know, Scottish father sort of thing, you know, you know, look at the size of his head. <laughs> Wait, he even, his he even says at one point early on in the book, he's like, yes, uh, self-talk matters. I'm not talking about that looking in the mirror and saying I'm good enough. I'm smart enough and doggone it. People like me. I'm just too Scottish for that S word, you know, <laughs> 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 it's uh yeah it's really really good i highly recommend it i'm i like it so much that i'm only halfway done with the second book and i can tell this is going to be one of those that's just on loop for for several uh for several relaunches i gotta pick awesome Chris? i gotta pick uh i uh went to the movies over the weekend uh there's a lot of a lot of films out and i pictures is my pick <laughs> uh, I I went and actually had a good time with Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, the new cool. video game adaptation of the classic uh, blue hedgehog guy. Uh, a couple of things that sort of stood out for me. The action is very good, and I thought it was more fun than Detective Pikachu. I think Detective Pikachu is very like a big spectacle, but I think Sonic the Hedgehog really just gets the action better. Um, and Jim Carrey is actually like pretty good in this. I think you look at the trailers and you're like, Jim Carrey's not going to be any good because they pick kind of these bad, not great funny moments. But He's wacky, over-the-top, annoying Jim Carrey at his rubber-faced comedianist. Yeah, I, where I think he he gets a better a better shake in the film. The, the one thing that I, I didn't catch until the very end is, like, this is a very, like, Americana movie, Sonic the Hedgehog. Is it like, like Cannonball Run? I've not seen Cannonball Run, so no, I don't know. That's, like, do they go all over America is what I'm asking. Oh, uh, n- no. Uh, in fact, they, they, <laughs> it's, I, it is kind of a road trip movie for a very uh, poorly explained reason. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, it's, I don't know. There are a lot of little things that made me go, oh, this might be, this is, uh, this is really, it's just very weird that they set up Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik and by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, this is definitely like a coastal elite hipster villain <laughs> trying to take down the, the country boy who needs to learn the value of staying in the country and not moving to gay San Francisco. Like all sorts of uh, <laughs> weird, all sorts of little things like that that made me just think about this movie a second time. But I thought it was kind of fun. And I think... Um, as an adult who went and saw it and had a good time, I think kids would enjoy it a lot. Uh, yeah, largest uh, video game opening of all time. Holy yeah. cow. It beat out Detective big, Pikachu. Big, bigger than Tomb Raider? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Everything. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, cheers to the Sonic folks who who reacted, who listened to uh, the online reaction to how terrible the, the initial CGI was, went and redid it, and, and it appears like, they they did the reinvestment on a script that people are are resonating with because it's it's getting 
pretty good reviews and look, it made a ton of money. So, uh, how rarely them. is at the story uh, before release? Hollywood responds to angry mob, does exactly what they say. Product becomes better. Like that's that's not usually what we get. Well, and it's weird because you know, if you think of like the timeline of that, it's there. It's not crazy for a Hollywood production to make a big change at the last minute. Uh, there, there was um, was it uh, Captain Marvel that someone was telling me like the story the. The end, the end thing about Captain Marvel to kind of no, explain no, 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 why no, one of the characters was, was that was, that, that well, might, wait, 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 hold on. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is relevant. Uh, I think Justin has something to say. Uh, I, no, I don't know. No, who Spider-Man, you... far from home. Spider-Man far from home. Spider-Man far oh, from home. Gotcha. Excuse me. Sorry. I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, so uh, like Spider-Man far from home, the ver- the thing at the end of that movie to explain one of the characters being that way was shot like a week before that mil- movie came to theaters. Like very last minute changes, big last minute changes are not uh, 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 rare in Hollywood. Why are you making we that face? Marvel? Because I don't know that that that, that was that, I, I don't know if that's public knowledge. <laughs> well, Marvel, Marvel wow. makes it. Cool, that's great. Whole, Marvel, good. Marvel, good. it was, it was up because like Marvel, Marvel always plans for reshoots, and and they're known for reshoots up until the point of release. They're going to do this, and and Marvel's less panicked by that because they'll go. We like this whole story. They've got this, like Kevin Feige has this weird, they used to have the whole, the, the committee that looked at stuff and now it just goes out there to his his own, like people get notes back with, and this is publicly known stuff, people like, you know, people who work on Marvel movies and stuff, they will get scripts back with notes and changes and you don't know where they came from. They're just there and it's Feige to Feige laterally to somewhere else. But then also they plan for reshoots They'll be like, yeah, this is good enough to start production because they have that window they have to hit. They have to have a May release or whatever. They're going to hit yeah. it knowing that like, okay, yeah, but we've already told our actors too, this contract. Yeah, if three weeks before premiere, we're going to have you in a studio where we recorded lines or shooting extra scenes, this is the way we do it. We know we make sure the fundamental story is there, but we got to make sure that those little points and things we have to add. And that's that's smart. But with doing the CGI, and we just saw that with Cats where they changed it as it was in theaters, mm-hmm. they changed the CGI. Now you can do that because once you figure out your main animations and a lot of that other stuff, a lot of time it is sort of just more of reskinning or do some other stuff, which is not trivial, but can be done. And there was a there was sort of a backlash when they said, "Oh, we're going to redo Sonic," because some directors are like, "Ah, you shouldn't listen to the public outcry." I like to say, like, yeah, as in general, I think you should go with your instincts. But when your reaction's that strong and you're making a business to make money, if people say your food. We tried the sample and it tastes horrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it, like you know, Sonic's character design in the movie is good. Like he, it, yeah. I, I, I just try to imagine scenes of that movie with the old design where he looks like yeah. a little kid in a costume and he's got the weird eyes and teeth. Yeah, and you know, and- that would be that would really be bad. I'm glad that they changed. I know like last minute and all of the the company that did the production on the CG on uh, you know shut down after like X, Y, and Z, but I think it was a well, good call for the movie. What we don't know too is sometimes there were fights behind the scenes where let's say the director said, I wasn't happy, I want you to change this, and the producer's like, no, we already spent this much money on it, we're not gonna do it, and they're like, no, we need to do this, or vice versa. There are, you, you, there are fights between them, like, no, we, we sh- we, we're gonna go this way, and then they get the trailer, and then all of a sudden somebody says, look, I just won the argument, we're gonna do the way I asked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Now all so. of a sudden there's there there's ammunition. Yeah. That, that uh, now all of a sudden everybody agrees. Oh my God! Of course we should yeah. we should redo this. Yeah, I don't know why. You know the uh, beat counters. Fox. Nobody wants a Deadpool movie. Nobody's gonna see a Deadpool movie. Deadpool trailer. You know the fake the the the, the previs is just leaked to the internet and it blew up the internet. Maybe people want to see a Deadpool movie. Oh, yeah. Who oh my knew? God. Jeez, Ryan, uh, I'll tell you what. I'm so glad we were able to get in touch with you. We've been trying to call you for years on this day. <laughs> you got to get this thing going. Um, my pick is Ford versus Ferrari. Man, Which, I'm so surprised to hear so much good buzz about that movie because I, I did not expect much out of it from, from uh, again, the trailer. Did you see it? No, 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 no. I, I, I just keep hearing uh, more and more people saying really good things about it, which... Uh... So, I, my one crit was, 
when the credits came out, when it started, the opening, when the title came up, and I saw that it was Ford v. Ferrari, and like Batman v. Superman, <laughs> I had this sort yeah. of like, oh, oh, no, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Just put that out of your head. Um, uh, yeah, Brian, I would say that it is a movie that's about more than the title, mm -hmm. you know? And so that it's, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And, it. and it's, you know, I think it's a great example of like, Hollywood can make great films that aren't franchised. They don't have superheroes and stuff. And Hollywood can make great stories. Hollywood really can do that. You put you put them in the hands of somebody who's really capable, like James Mangold did, and the cast they did. And you look who's you know this has been a story that's been you know I think a lot of directors have wanted to make forever, but finally got it made. I, I really I thought James it was very Mangold very well done. Is uh, the director of Logan? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Wolverine, Logan, yeah. Uh, yeah, three ten to Yuma, right? Um, he gets performances and, yeah. and gets two great performances out of two awesome like not just actors these are like movie star performances where they just yeah. walk on screen and you just you can you can feel their presence uh yeah i think i i really enjoyed it I, I enjoyed it a lot more than i thought i was going to walking in uh i don't i'm not a crazy car guy uh and even i could notice that some of some of the story has to strain against the realities of the fact that this is a true story and mm -hmm. more specifically that this is a true story about a company that still is in existence and wants the 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 mythology around their their, their company to be a certain thing uh but i thought it was fantastic i thought it was uh a, a great a great night at the movies and and i would encourage everybody to go see it yeah yeah mangold's one of those directors that like I wasn't like a fan of like Wolverine. I'm like, ah, is this? And then like, ah, he want. But then once he was able to do, you hear about the behind the scenes. Well, the studio wants this. This is a script they like. Da 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 da. When he got a little more free, when he finally got the free reign for Hugh, him and Hugh Jackman to go do Logan, the story they wanted to do, and fought and fought and fought to do that, and got like a smaller budget to do that. It's amazing. And and that's been you know another Fox picture. And it was just sort of that's the thing I sometimes realize sometimes. You'll see a movie and you're like, who do you blame? And often it's not the director. It's like they have to work with whatever they have. And you know, he's a guy that seems to just you know shine. So there was a podcast. I can't. I'm pretty sure it was Freakonomics. It might have been a radio. I'm pretty sure it was Freakonomics where they were talking about uh, how Blumhouse uh, uh, pictures work and how they're famously very very stingy uh, uh, for the most part on their speculative movies. And there was uh, one scene where it was very clear to the director that the only way to get the visceral gut punch is to actually show the needle being stabbed into someone's eye, which means you have to get a life cast, which means you have to get a prosthetic, which you know. It's a thirty thousand dollar shot, and and they went back and forth, and and uh, Jason Blum was like, uh, uh, "You can have this shot if you write the check." <laughs> and eventually, yeah. in this case, the director had the means, uh, ended up writing the check, and then the movie tanked. <laughs> and so, yeah. but apparent, but apparently, the director was happy with that shot. But that push pull is is certainly. Uh, yeah. age, the age old ever since train pulls into station somebody was saying this should be 40k and 60 frames per second and the producer was like <laughs> it, they can upscale it in post it'll be fine well just uh, just to touch that but you know kind of Bloomhouse's secret sauce was that obviously they had, like they had everybody a lot of people do super low budgets but like the Rimchin, like they had a director at the means says they'll get directors who were in director jail. Directors who like maybe they did some big, did a couple big movies with $100 million budgets and they didn't do well, but had been good directors before. And Bloomhouse will come in and say, all right, you got a tiny budget, but I'll give you a freer reign to do what you want to do um, within that budget because you know they're, Hollywood's undervaluing your talent. And, yeah. and it's worked out wonderful for them. So. Gentlemen, it's been weird. All right. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. Uh, that's weird things, everybody. We'll do after things in just a moment. Yeah. Here, I'll be right back. Actually, upon looking at the uh, analytics, I think I think uh, uh, you were right, Andrew. Um, <laughs> judging from the uptick, I wouldn't be surprised if some Christian forums is linking to this video like well, that was, that's justin oh J justin was right justin andrew was wrong you were right i would not yeah yeah i would i would not be shocked if if uh you know you got bible bible town dot edu <laughs> slash web forums just leaking to you 
All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, friends. Oh, glad to be back. I don't know if I'm gonna here. Actually, let me check to see whether or not I'll be back here next week. I'm flying back uh, from uh, Vegas on Monday. Yeah, unless Bloomberg's people hire you to do social media. <laughs> Uh, considering the fact, if, if you look at who is posting sponsored content for them, uh, you know, they are, they are booking the best in the biz. <laughs> yeah. Do you, th uh, it's, uh, I got a question. Uh, well, it's I like don't a, know. I'll, 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 I'll be back by, uh, by, by showtime next week. Sorry, Bryce. Go ahead. Oh. Um, I, I have a question at, at risk of getting into another political, um, conversation. Um, so Bloomberg is obviously spending a lot of money and doing so to put his name out there. But do you think that that's going to do anything? Do you think that that is a day late and a dollar short? I mean, he could spend he could spend double that, but do you think he's actually going to... I don't know what his policies are. I don't know anything about him other than him being the mayor of 9-11. And I'm going to think that for a lot of people who don't live in New York, um, they're not going to know why they should even think about it. Well, uh, uh, think of it like this. Uh, most campaigns build up their war chest as you get momentum, mm -hmm. right? So sure. even even the ones that are taking money from super PACs or, or big donors, typically those checks start getting cut as let's say Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren or Joe Biden are like, well, look, we've got momentum from these events. But man, I just got the, the the quote back from trying to buy ad time in, and let's just take a look at the Super Tuesday states now, San Francisco, Houston, Dallas, Boston, like these are major media markets that are, are a lot more expensive than let's say Des Moines, Manchester, and uh, Las Vegas, right? So that's when you start to get these big mega, you know, either by your audience or by big donors, to put in money for that. Mm -hmm. By skipping all these early contests, Bloomberg has been on the air in all those markets because money is not an option or not, not an issue for him for about for weeks now. So he is the only game in town. He is the only person that has ads up uh, on there. Now, as for what he stands for, I think that is something that is intentionally uh, uh, vague beyond the fact that he has a, a record on gun control and and the environment uh, mm -hmm. but uh, uh will it work who knows no one's ever really tried it like this before and 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 consider this we have really only over the past 10 years entered into the world where billion dollar campaigns are normal right bloomberg has spent close to 400 million dollars now before he has even been on the ballot to vote. Like no one has had the chance to see his name printed on a ballot yet, and they won't for another two weeks. Hmm. So the idea that he could spend, if he got the nomination, close to $2 billion on a campaign is very much in play. And we've never seen that kind of money uh, 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 before. So we don't know what it can do. He He's, yeah, I, I think it's, it's interesting like i don't so far the messaging i've seen it seems like he's sort of hired the best in the business but they're kind of doing conventional work in a position like this and i don't think they've really worked the way they can but he's rich he's smart and you know if you're looking at a brokered convention um that really leads to that just means he's got to pick up enough delegates enough places and by the time they make it to the convention you know be in a position where you know, being, you know, one of the richest men in the world. I mean, it's it's like you talk about billionaires, these guys were like 50 billion, the amount of cash he has coming in every year. If it's spent smart, you know, could could have an impact. He's He's got $46 billion and, and the, the conventional estimate that I've heard a few places is that on interest alone or on investments and in interest alone, he makes about $2 billion. So if he spends $2 billion, again, double what we have normally uh, understood to be like a presidential campaign total cost if he spends double that 
it's effectively just him saying, oh, well, I guess I'll just dip into my $46 billion uh, well, that, that I also have. And I guess back to my original question is like, is, is, I guess, is beyond the unlimited amount of money, like, is ads enough? What, like, is ads enough? We, we, we don't know. I mean, yeah. a, a lot of it is going to be what happens coming out of South Carolina by the time that Super Tuesday rolls around. Uh, he is running effectively on what is the most important thing to all Democratic voters of all stripes. Can he beat Donald Trump? That is effectively what he's running on is I can. I'm willing to commit to to do it. And I'm going to run on the most middle of uh, middle of the road platform possible. That's very uh damaging to somebody like a pete Buttigieg or a joe biden uh who are trying to run into that lane now um and it is certainly vexing for the bernie sanders uh supporters of the world who now face a yet another unconventional uh threat now that they've actually like they seem to be in the pole position to win the nomination at least the way that it has always been run in the past now there is yet another uh, a challenger on the horizon. But but to your point, Bryce, we are all going to find out together whether or not this is a, a feasible plan or if actually running in these contests that have thought to be of all importance uh, actually matters on the level that we've assumed they do. Mm. Cool. Here, give me a second. I'm going to get another water. Uh, you guys have any things you want to talk about on After Things? Um, I mean, uh, I got binders full of topics, binders and binders full. So yeah, I I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm I feel like it's a well worn subject though. Like I'm currently, uh, oftentimes we just talk about whatever we're musing on, and I'm definitely musing on the push pull of whether or not to just give up responding to comments full stop especially when the comment section is nothing but like like oh, yeah. there's just no dividends in there i have a t i have i have a very i have an on topic discussion to bring to this about maybe the new era we may be in so okay. we, we could totally talk about that um, but i'm gonna use a restroom sure cool yo so what's the next uh what's the next big super bowl that you're covering <laughs> Vegas, baby, Nevada caucus uh, this weekend. Uh, I'll be out there Thursday through Monday. And uh, then after that, it's off to South Carolina for the South Carolina primary. Uh, then back here three days later for Super Tuesday. And then after that to Florida for the primary. But you, you might have already answered this, but what is normally the it's all over deadline which which state is is more often than not they're like all right we we got this probably super so, Tuesday, right uh yeah although you know usually we start to see some backs get broken this is an unusually uh, unusually wide field um so we're still dealing with the effects of the fact that iowa didn't kill anybody Iowa normally kills somebody and we're in a very weird position where like I went to Amy Klobuchar's event in Iowa thinking that that was going to be the last Amy Klobuchar event because if you're the senator from Minnesota neighboring Iowa and you come in fifth place that's usually about time for you to go ahead and flip that sign to close and start thinking about what happens afterward Instead, we get no, like, everybody gets to escape Iowa with no judgment, at least in terms of that immediate news cycle of all the people on on television saying that you sucked and you need to go away. Uh, and then Klobuchar comes back and gets third in New Hampshire. So now all of a sudden she looks resurgent. And, and I think that there is, you know, a... Uh, uh, we're in a place where now more and more people are perpetuating this idea of a brokered convention, which, by the way, we haven't had in over 50 years and still remains intensely unlikely. But everybody keeps wanting to say it like it's this normal thing that happens every once in a while. Half a century. Uh, we have not 
had it. We have not. We do not have a current system built for it. Still possible, right? And I get it. It's a wide field. But the fact that people keep mentioning that means that you have candidates like Elizabeth Warren. Similar situation. Ate a pound of poop in New Hampshire, despite the fact that she is from a very populous neighboring state where she should have done a lot better. Uh, but now she's not going to drop out, at least until after Super Tuesday at the very earliest, because she's like, well, I can get some delegates. I'm still polling very well nationally. I'm still in the top three nationally. So I'll soak up delegates and maybe go try to fight at the convention, which if that's the case of what people are thinking, I, I, I don't, I don't know where that, I don't know where that ends. Uh, all I'll say is this: the the sm the smartest or the most honorable thing that I've seen in politics was Andrew Yang getting behind a microphone and saying, "I probably could have went on with a smaller crew, but I don't think it would be right for me to willfully ask for your money when I don't think that I can win." Mm -hmm. That is that is something that is very rare in politics. Where am and I gonna get my thousand dollars now? <laughs> I. I yeah, I, I, I commend him uh, who has raised money better than Joe Biden, has raised money better than a lot of, of, of these other candidates, uh, saying, save your money. I can't win okay. at dropping out because I can name at least three other candidates that should probably having have, probably be having the same conversation with their with their audience. <clears throat> yeah, I think I hope for Yeah, there are some people who had pretty good, like he had a pretty good relationship the way you'd listen to some of his talks other than we was talking about how <laughs> the next, what the next wave of church shootings is going to come from that cliff. Um, he seemed to be straightforward and honest guy. There have been a few people like that who haven't had the the bigger momentum, but maybe never four years from now, whatever. I think there's a good group of like kind of next wave, you know, politicians in there that I hope you know can continue to stay involved and get support. You know. So. Yeah, uh, I just, you know, sometimes the bell is tolling, and you can either put your fingers in your ears and pretend that it's not. Or you can get out, endorse somebody, and just understand that it ain't your uh, it ain't your time at the dance. You know, so uh, just important part. It's who does Chappelle go to now? <laughs> I think he goes to the kitchen so we can steal his uh, children's lunch for uh, for school. <laughs> uh, are you guys uh, about ready to do after things? Anybody else need to take a break? No, I'm good. I'm good. Good. Anybody got any outs? Uh, yes. As always, I will have to peace out at some point and go get Penny. Uh, three forty-five or? Uh, yes, ish, ish. Okay. All right. All right. Let's start after things then. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody. That's me. Gentlemen, it's 2020, and we live in a new era. So much of what goes on right now is shaped by social media, things like Twitter, Facebook, etc. But those companies are all over, well over a decade old. They form to help us communicate and talk to people in an era when the internet was still kind of sort of new. Same with YouTube. Now we have people who've created audience, who have audiences and followers and stuff that extend beyond any single platform. And sometimes the limitations of those platforms become very apparent. We've talked about deplatforming people who say things that are you know, uh, politically incorrect or just outright wrong or what have you, or offend a certain group of people. And they get deplatformed, but somebody else who maybe is just as offensive isn't you deal with the problem of, because there's so much stuff out there, there's the noise and the algorithm trying to sort this stuff. And we've talked about our frustration when Facebook became big and we're like, oh, I'll tell everybody to go follow my Facebook page. And then one day Facebook's page is like, yeah, about that. If you really want to communicate your people now, you got to pay to pay us, which was annoying. YouTube went to an algorithm, but you can go to a timeline format, but YouTube incurred, or excuse me, well, YouTube does that. Twitter does that. Twitter encourages people to follow lots of other people, which means maybe somebody signed up to follow, you know, I like this guy on Scam School. I'm going to follow him on Twitter, and now I'm following 500 other people, and I don't see what he has to say or what have you in other forms. And so I think that my point is we're getting to a point where it's super, super noisy out there, 
And so much of our time isn't spent talking to our fans or talking to the people that want to follow us. It's dealing with everybody else on this platform. And Brian, specifically, you deal with this all the time on YouTube and comments. Yeah, and I wonder if if it's maybe time for me to rethink that strategy. I think that, you know, we... Um... I think it's, uh, it seems to have worked so far. A everything I've said before about answering comments is when somebody, there, there's two types of comments. There's, there's uh, uh, this is nice, great. Yeah, you're cool. You like me, I like you. There's lazy sass, in which case I usually just respond, you know, tit for tat with more la with their la lazy sass holding up a mirror. But then there's people who just lose their mind with rage, in which case, like, okay, this is real energy that if they just understood the context of why I said what I said could be redirected to convert someone to, into a super fan. So that tends to be a good investment to bother to respond to anyone. And uh, that worked to get, um, <clears throat> you know, scam school in the early days. Like, who is this weirdo with dumb looking hair? Like, great, that's energy. How can we mold that? How can we shape that? How can we direct that and make them part of a tribe? Uh, then with, with the modern rogue, it's like, uh, uh, who are these idiots? Like, yeah, we're total idiots and I'm glad you're here. This is awesome. But, but now that we've passed the million subscriber mark, I'm starting to notice different phenomenon. For example, on Friday, we did a an episode on uh, popular in hacking circles is getting an RFID chip subcutaneously inserted in your hand. It's uh, basically think of it as a as a scratch pad that I think it has like you know four four kilobits of. Uh, uh, data, maybe kilobytes, I don't know, that, that you can uh, do everything from use your cell phone to program it to go to a web page to, you know, update with your hotel key or whatever. Um, but the point is, this is something that you totally control. Uh, it's it's like walking around with a with a legal pad in in your your hand, and uh, there are practical benefits, especially for like uh, Deviant Olive was uh, our, our our guide through this, and he's a penetration tester. He used it in order to get back behind the scenes by ostensibly using his his guest badge to open a door when really he was using the RFID chip in his hand with st with with stolen uh, guard credentials. And of course, this is all with the permission uh, of the uh, business owners for the purpose of, of finding uh, uh, exploits in their system. So uh, it seemed fairly uncontroversial to me, uh, but man, oh man, as I look at the comments now, it is, uh, when it first launched, it was 90% this is awesome, and then 10% uh, I don't like this split into two camps. One camp was the tinfoil hat wearing, well, great, now the government can track you camp, which missed the fact that the government doesn't need a chip to track you. They can track you based on your face and your phone and, and your, your accounts and all that stuff, so... I'm like, I'm like, guys, you're, you're running when nobody's chasing you. Uh, and then, but then recently the comments have all become like 90% of all the comments on the channel are people quoting revelations or calling names or whatever. And at this point, it's such a deluge. I honestly don't know what the right answer is or, or whether it's worth any amount of effort on, on this. Um, so it, it could be that this is an artifact of us getting over a certain swell point and it no longer becomes worth it to even look at the comments, or it could be that we just delete them. I, 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 I don't have a strong sense. This is a bit of uncharted territory for me. Uh, so for, for, sorry, go ahead, Bryce. Uh, one thing to kind of set the, to set some background is that like we have like, especially back when it was just us doing scam school, like we've been a little cavalier we, we, we've been also a little cavalier about removing bad comments sure because mostly if you remove someone's comment they never get notified that that happened and unless they go to look for it even if they go to look for their comment which people don't do uh the youtube comment system is so bad that they could just easily assume and most likely just assume i can't find it i don't know where it was I'm not thinking about it any ever again. If you uh, use the option to like hide a person so that none of their comments ever show up, they never know that they are not going to ever see anything that makes it clear that that happened. So uh, it's it's a little different from like a Twitter block where you see a thing and it's like this person has blocked you. It's just like you are quietly whisked away. It's it's as and though there's not as much of a huge explosion 
as it is on other social media platforms. It's it's a bit like using the mute function on Twitter, only you mute them to everyone. <laughs> like all of a sudden they're deplatformed yeah. and never know it. Basically. Yeah, and and that's the the I think what you guys have realized, and and I believe rightly and smartly, is that a comment section is not just a web form. Right. It is not just there as a public utility for people to go back and forth. It is a connected part of the experience. So it is much more like a movie choosing movie reviews to put on their poster than it is necessarily just an open place where anybody can say anything. And so you guys, I think, uh, and what, what some people have realized, and, and you guys among them, is that no, we when when some stranger comes over here and they are thinking about whether or not they're going to enjoy this product, oftentimes they're reading the comments as the thing is going on. So let's make sure that at, at the very least, even if they're going to be snarky and sassy, there is some control there. Now, what you have here is is something different. So let me ask you this, Brian: uh, Is there room in your in your social engagement philosophy? to understand just breakaway renegade videos? Like, can you just say, you wanna know what? This is so unique that it cannot really affect my broader worldview of how to engage on the internet. It's just every once in a while, there's the, the, the black swan where we've crossed into a realm that we really don't have any interest in going back and forth on, uh, so we'll just, you know, do whatever I, I, we I, hear. I think that is the null hypothesis is I'm tempted to think, okay, obviously what I've been doing has been working and this, this video is an outlier because, um, Normally, uh, you know, even the government tinfoil hat people, I could at least, you know, bounce it back to, you know, hey, here's this article that sort of, you know, diffuses some of your you know, worries about it. But but all the religious people, I'm like, like there there is no chance that I'm going to make a dent in any of them. That's, yeah, that's on brand for Modern Rogue. Somebody being like the government's going to track you is at least in the in the in the universe that you've created where you've made videos on like how to destroy your identity and get off the grid, right? Like that is something that you guys have done in the past. So at least that is within the realm you're speaking that language. The modern rogue has not taken a position of theology, let alone <laughs> the uh, the righteousness of revelations and how seriously we should take it. So there's really no move for you guys other than to say, I guess we're, uh, I guess we are on your radar. If you all <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's cool. like flat earthers commenting on NASA videos, you know. Like it's like well, there there is oh. nothing to be gained from there. Uh oh. Uh, so hey, look what I found. Uh, someone posted about an hour ago. One of these comments from an hour ago has a YouTube link, uh, which you know, and it's it's one of the you must not accept the microchip as we will be enslaved. Blah 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 blah. Uh, and linked to another YouTube channel, which featured this video in it. Um, oh, whoa! Titled, Be Prepared for This in 2020, and Be Ready to Just Say No. And oh, look at that. They have their own Patreon thing. Uh, so this is definitely some... This is definitely a softly coordinated, uh, directed um, So thing. that probably... How many views does, does that video have? Uh, 18,000. Hmm. That would certainly... That would certainly explain the influx of this. I'd be curious. I'm going to bet. And it was that, posted today. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to bet that that video, uh, which I guess congrats to us. I'm going to guess that that bit, uh, video specifically makes a religious argument as opposed to the tinfoil hat argument, which is why all of a sudden all the comments are tilting to uh, to religious. Uh, uh, I arguments. won't show their thing on, on screen, but their Patreon reads, content creator on YouTube exposing the synagogue of Satan, the new okay. world order agenda, <laughs> the Illuminati and globalism <laughs> due to YouTube demonetization. So, and this is all in caps. So it's like a religious truth or sort of guy. So here's the question. Do, do we quietly... Uh, do we quietly hide all these or do we just say no whatever kids because because unlike other stuff I don't think any of our audience perceives that anybody's making a cogent argument or or necessarily I'm not worried about any of these folks seducing well, me, uh, uh, any of our fans into becoming their fans well let me let me and throw this out there too is the idea that 
for your fans, let them engage and have fun with this because it's content. You've just these people have given you a gift, the gift of controversy and content for a thing where the controversy that you to any rational person, you didn't do anything controversial, and it's more of a bunch of radical crazies are attacking this, which means that I don't know, it's kind of like, great, come here. You just look silly, and my fans will have fun commenting on the comments and stuff about this. Yeah, and um, uh, and uh, by the way, definitely an uptick. Definitely a, a busy day today. <laughs> but uh, well, right, so mm. so number one, you know, you win for these views, right? <laughs> like, right. Like, unlike unlike this guy who uh, uh, is talking about being demonetized, you are very much monetized, and uh, uh, those numbers still count no matter where they come from. Uh, the the question then becomes in your social media worldview, do you take the views and minimize the conflict or do you allow the conflict to play out or do you exacerbate the conflict? Yeah, Those I, I, like your I think that if we were a smaller channel, if we were earlier in our career, then maybe you exacerbate it, maybe you engage, maybe you see what you can make out of it. But but I think in this case, like uh, that man, uh, that that whole religious aspect, that 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 uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> stop me if you've heard this before. Uh, uh, on the Weird Things podcast, we've run across some people who uh, just can't have their minds changed, and this is I'm going to say a uh, conservative estimate: 100 percent of them are not in a place to have their minds changed. Uh, in which case, uh, uh, whatever, let let the kids run around crazy. Uh, and, and I thank you for stopping by and watching. I have a I have a suggestion, Brian. Uh, okay. Yes, a money making suggestion for you. Ready? Yeah. Sell RFID chips with the Constitution. Constitution's 4,500 <gasps> characters. RFID is 2K, but with compression, you could put the Constitution on it. Remember how Penn and Teller had their little metal plate ones? Oh, or you my could do... God. Yes. These people would more prefer, I think, the Bible. <laughs> it's not for them, Bryce. It's not for them. At I first, see. I thought, okay. the Ten Commandments, I thought, like, no, but go there and say, oh, you don't like the Constitution either? <laughs> By the way, uh, probably doesn't help that since getting his chip, uh, Jason has since reprogrammed it, so it plays a YouTube uh, video of a Slayer song. <laughs> uh, I programmed him with Mr. Roboto, I'll have you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, and, and again, for those of you who are listening, the, the video describes effectively a process that it would be about akin to getting your ears pierced. It is a process that happens in a shed on Brian's property. So it's not exactly anything that requires even, you know, anything that could be considered even minor surgery, right? This is just uh same with the chip uh, animals. It, it, yeah. it exactly. Um it is it is funny though to be on the receiving end of somebody confidently announcing that uh, we're being paid to normalize RFID chip or whatever. Like, like, like to 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 be told that our bosses, the capital T, they out there, and I, it's 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 I don't know. It's I've I've never had this close a, a view of being accused of being part of a cabal, uh, a global international conspiracy. You know, it, it's funny. It reminds me a lot of uh, you know, even when I was in when I was in newspapers and uh. People would talk to us about like, oh, we're being controlled, and you know, at, at that point, that nomenclature was that we were there for oil money, right? Because <laughs> we were a part of the 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 agenda to keep us in the Iraq War. But like, uh, uh, it is it is a funny thing to look out and be like, oh, how did you get there? It's <laughs> like literally all I'm doing is like. I'm I'm interviewing an old woman about her parking ticket. Like like Jesus, this was uh, this escalated quickly. I like uh, codes from Holmes' comments. SpaceX building rockets and sheds in Texas. Modern road making cybernetic implants in Texas in sheds. Texas man, it's a place. <laughs> Not damn right. <laughs> to to give you an idea uh, of some of the other channels that these people or some of the other videos that these people watch. Uh, here's one entitled "Brain Cells in America Are at an All Time Low." Uh, here's a big storm is coming and you are about to be blamed for it. 
Super Bowl 54 halftime show Illuminati exposed. Uh, that's a, <laughs> that, wait, 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 now now that's some that's some good company that Did way. I really just see this on the Price is Right and it's a screenshot of uh, a guy in a bodysuit and he's be- bid $666 for whatever the <laughs> I'm assuming washing machine was. So All right, I'm getting uh I'm getting uh, better and better feelings about uh, the company that we're in. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, look. Uh, uh, without a doubt, uh, this is a validation for the Modern Rogue brand. The Modern Rogue brand is looked at as something that is polished enough to attack on the level of broadcast television. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that winds up. Uh, I mean, look, it's got an audience. It is a conspiratorial religious audience. Uh, there is obviously an element of your brand that does embrace conspiratorial thinking at least as it results to kind of critical thinking and and adventurism sure and Um, and uh uh, prepperism and survivalism and i mean there's some overlap in those communities but but this is obviously this is a flavor for which you are I, i don't know exactly how much of a benefit there is to you even engaging i mean like like yeah, my, yeah. my my gut instinct would be you know leave if, if there's like a thread of people going back and forth then maybe you leave that but by and large i don't think wholesale deleting of of these comments is a negative thing i, I think that there's you get to control the experience of people especially if you're in a world where these views are possibly bringing this video increased visibility right. by way of the algorithm then you controlling where that goes is in your benefit and if you don't see an upside to this turning into a battle over scripture or uh your audience yelling at a a, a crowd that obviously is just not having anywhere near the same conversation that you guys are um then You know, like I I wouldn't I if I'm you, I'm like, look, let's talk about whether or not this the government can track you. Cool. Let's Mm -hmm. let's talk about that. That plugs into our universe, whether or not Revelations is real or we're being funded by the Illuminati uh, is is. I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I I could see a world where you're like, no, let's have a conversation about the Illuminati. Well, well, but th- 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 that world exists in a world where I have uh, free time, and we don't live in that world, so I will not be having that conversation. Uh, and, and so really it's more of a policy decision. The question is, mm-hmm. do we dedicate team resources to pressing hide or, or delete or whatever, like – even if it's just three comments, that's some amount invested in it. Uh, for for right now, as uh, I don't know, uh, right now it's a it's a, it's a Winchester situation, and then uh, we'll check in tomorrow. I think. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. we already the you know we already set we we already spend a certain amount of time looking at these things anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's yeah, I, I'm looking at this more and more on this channel that is posted about you and i, I just think, there's I think, there's no talking to them certainly and i don't think you're ever going to win these people over no and i i think that like i think as far as we're in an it's everybody knows it's a much noisier environment everything knows now like your fans know what they're there for and whatnot and i don't yeah. think it i think better spent serving them um i do think you should all consider adding the illuminati level to your patreons <laughs> just to say that <laughs> You know, and six dollars and sixty six cents. Still have not been bought by the Illuminati. We should set it up where it's just like one of one, (laughs) like like it says. It just has like some million dollars an episode. If you're the Illuminati, and then just show it as occupied by by a dummy account. (laughs) It's like the the one they did with like the uh, the warrants for like you know the the companies that say we so far haven't been served by one of these warrants to like divulge our information. The canary thing. You know, because you're not allowed to divulge, but you can say we can no longer say that we haven't been served one of these. Oh, that's, that's funny. Like, you, you know, yeah, if we have one of one available, we, you know we haven't bought out yet. That's funny. It does on the algorithm or the analytics page specifically say, great news. Last week, your videos got more views from recommendations. So that uh, I think I think that that's exactly right. That uh, this that is these a people looked you bed. up. Well, well, well. 
they they are in the middle of a rabbit hole and then and we titled it very simply getting an rfid implant so like uh, like yeah man tell me how that's bad and then they're like what <laughs> yeah i mean uh, uh, rfid implants are something that i i have I have seen triggers a certain element of the religious community for a while, right? So it it, it does not surprise me. When, when Brian first brought this up in in the pre-show, my initial thing was uh, you got linked somewhere where <laughs> there where this is a thing. And uh, uh, I I think now that we found the found the source, that's confirmed. But uh, again, it, it it's it, it's about where where this is. But I mean, look, if if part of it is like, hey. This one got swamped. It also got a lot of views. We'll just leave that there. At, at some point, maybe we look to go back if we got free time to to, to clean it up. But uh, whew, like that that definitely is is a different realm of conversation than the modern rogue is kind of used to getting. Yeah. Well, I. I want to uh, so, move to uh, uh, wait real quick before we do. Uh, uh, Bryce, you just pointed out that there's a comment saying they filter their comments. Yeah, uh, which is another thing that we could do. Right? Is uh, people don't use this much, but there's an option on YouTube like accept, like take comments, but only show the ones that we approve. Which would be like you would still let people do the the work of putting in a comment, but I think it may not show up until uh, someone clicks a check mark next to it um but i don't i think that would Man, just be even I more work. really really like the metaphor that justin made about quotes on a movie poster that is a really cogent simple way to think of it yeah so i want an update from bryce in your video game newsletter yes yeah uh yeah l actually let me pull up the mailchimp and see what the um okay what the response rate was that, I received the first issue and I read it. I, w I very much liked the way you laid things out. I liked the way you, you broke it down. I liked the way these digestible little bits, here's my thing on this, here's my talking about that. I enjoyed that. I really liked that and was very excited. I'm like, yay, it came, yay, everybody. I was clapping, you know. But, um, so, uh, but yeah, pull up your data and I'd love, you, love to hear your thoughts on where this is so far. Yeah, let me get my two-factor logged in. And, it, and uh, I think you mentioned this, Brian, last time that, um, uh, that MailChimp will say, hey, you should resend this. It, it gave me that a couple, like a day or two after I sent it out. And, and did you do, do so? I did do that. And, um, uh, and it, it, to my astonishment, usually that second resend gets almost as many people as the first send and, and virtually mm -hmm. no unsubscribes uh, because most likely they didn't see the first time. And when they see it the second time, they're like, oh, um, this is that thing that I signed up for. Yeah. Okay, uh, explore MailChimp audience. Here we go. Um, let's see. That campaign, which was the first uh, uh, email, uh, the un the one that was not resent, uh, the just the initial launch had sixty eight point one percent opens, uh, an eight That's point wonderful. an, an eight point five percent click rate. Now, uh, I didn't really have any. I, I linked out to a few things that I was on, but it wasn't really like, please go click this button. Please go do a thing for me. The resend, which was sent to 19 people, uh, which is uh, a little under half, had a 22% open rate, zero clicks. Um, Those are the people who have the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so oh, it, uh, by the way, where, where can I go to sign up? I forgot to get that last uh, time. Neshcom.com, N-E-S-H-C-O-M.com. There's a link that says uh, news, games newsletter on, on top of it. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, the thing that I bumped into was, so we were talking about release, how often it should release. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the thing that I was bumping into as I was putting it all together, um, it felt long for um, kind of what I thought I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it felt like this is a lot of, I think I ended up here having five bullet points on what would be in it, uh, two impressions, things two news things, and then two sort of goofier little things. I, I, I thought, I kind of thought that, uh, it, it, because I had been, I'd been letting it pool for a little while before I sent the first one, um, that I'd like to get them even smaller and have it be like about two times a week. Um, mm -hmm. 
but yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it, but you said you enjoyed the way that it was, it was structured, Andrew. Yeah, I like. I, I thought it visually was pleasing. I knew you did a good thing at the top. You organized the top to tell us what was there. Um, you know, so I, I thought that was. You, it, it looked like there was time and care put into it. Um, I think you, know, you know, graphics. I think that I don't. Uh, I don't think you're gonna. Ha I don't think you have to drive yourself too much crazy if you're at a point where like, oh, I don't have a graphic header for this. I don't think you need to be afraid of just doing like just a regular text thing header. But the way it was laid out, I really liked that. Yeah. And uh, you know, I liked how you did like you know when I got to the bottom where you're, you're breaking down that you know kind of like with like the act, the background, the what's new, what does it accomplish stuff. I liked you breaking that stuff down. And I think just you know it's going to be you know playing with you know from a formatting point of view, playing with the formatting as you pointed out the idea if you did it biweekly or what more often then they'll be shorter. Um, yeah. One technical thing I think you could look into is, you know, you can do in email anchor links so that you could actually click on the thing and jump down to that part of the message. Oh, yeah. I, I, I did see that they have anchor stuff. And, and I was at the point where it was like it was it was kind of in the evening. And I thought if I spend yeah. another hour on it. But, yeah, that's a good point, especially if I'm going to keep doing a table of contents tile top. Well, and that's the other thing you just addressed, too, is like that's the thing is I'm curious to see like your, your workflow and how can you. I, I I drop off so many projects because the idea is there, the content is there, but the workflow gets to be so tedious, mm -hmm. and what you're doing to mitigate that. Yeah, I um because like I I did end up, uh we we I think we talked maybe it was off the stream or maybe it was during during last week's episode about graphics. Um, I ended mm -hmm. up making these little banner headers in Photoshop, um, which I think it, it is fine. I, I think I think at the end of the day, it's it's going to be something where I have to finish this on a PC. I was just thinking in my head, what is there a way that I could workflow this where if I did everything on my mobile phone, could I get all parts of it done? And I think you right can now do that in Spark. Yeah, yeah Spark, we uh, we did talk about Spark a little bit, but I'm still getting my feet wet with Spark, and I did I yeah, yeah, no didn't get a chance to check out Canva like you recommended last week. Yeah, um, but but. E equally, I could make a template in Photoshop, and then that becomes a very simple thing. But um, yeah, yeah I, I I think it's um, I I feel good about it, and I feel like uh, I feel like I can keep keep going at this. Good, good. I that's gonna be the critical thing because I think that you know it's just, it's just a thing that you've been passionate for, and as long as we've done this pa podcast, you've always had interesting things to talk about every week about video games and stuff. And, hmm. you know, the, that, that content I think is there. So I'm yeah. excited to see where this goes. Thank you. So, uh, Hey, by the way, what, what, what did you think of uh, word tower or spell tower? Spell tower plus is great. Yep. Yeah, uh, what's, what's new about it from the old one? Uh, it is a remake of it. Oh, basically. It's, oh, it's called letter tower in this, in this iteration. Uh, it was originally called, Oh, did I? Oh, sh S word. I think uh, uh, I. It is called Spell Tower. I typed it wrong. In okay. The, in the no! No! Yeah. Uh, oh. Letter uh, words. It, it is. Fail. Fail. So, uh, no, it's a spell, learning process. It's a learning process. <laughs> yeah, it's a learning process. Spell Tower Plus. No, they uh, basically remade Spell Tower uh, into Spell Tower Plus so that it works on you know high res phones and modern phones and it's got like 11 different game modes and i just realized callie's gonna love it she'll she, she'd do well with that yeah yeah um uh i i think actually the the most i mentioned this in, in i mentioned this in the email neshcom.com uh that there are too many game modes there are too many and i open up spell tower and i go i don't know what i want to play and so i'm not going to play any of these thank you uh but it's pretty cool it's a it's a good uh traditional word finding uh, puzzle game, action puzzle game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture, picture Tetris meets uh, a crossword or, or word word finder. Everyone in the chat is now saying that they're unsubscribing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, people uh, are like, yeah, they're, they're quoting Revelations right now. <laughs> <laughs> and low towers shall become letters, and spelling shall be sky. He would misspell it with his left hand, the hand of the <laughs> devil. <laughs> so. Uh, while I have everybody here, I want to ask a question. Um, okay. And I know you guys had a conversation about this prior uh, when I was gone. Um, I want the follow-up, the Byte app for video. Where are we now? Anybody using it? Anything no. going on in that world? I, I think that's another Winchester situation where we're waiting to hear back. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I did download Byte 
uh, about the time that we talked about it, and I haven't used it. It has made it has gotten me to use TikTok more. Wow. Uh, because well, that, meanwhile, TikTok has gotten you to use TikTok less because it keeps shouting at you to go to bed. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm an adult man. I can browse TikTok at midnight. Um, <laughs> Uh, but um yeah i don't know every time i open up by this is the same problem i think i think we talked when we talked about it two weeks ago is that when you start up on byte it only let it only like auto follows you to the byte uh, account the main official byte account and if you don't know byte is basically vine 2.0 um and that means that every time i would log in i would just see the same stuff over and over again because it doesn't have a following thing. And then I would go to like, oh, what are the most popular bites? And it would all be just like hokey sketch stuff that I wasn't any of the stuff that I liked on Vine. Um, and then I just go back to TikTok because that's where people are doing the stuff I like on TikTok, which is just high schoolers getting high and, I don't know, knocking down signs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, I, I, when I first heard they were coming back, the relaunch, I'm like, well, I'm glad they, uh, hopefully they'll learn the lesson, lifted the six second. <laughs> limit nope. you know um and no and and i'm like well maybe the role is different now and people are, but like i think in a world with instagram snapchat and tiktok it's just a much it's, more crowded place it, it is and and tiktok has elevated it, its art form mm -hmm. so far beyond where the vine you can see the vine influence but it's like there's stuff that's on tiktok that just filters out to Twitter because it's so compelling that yeah. is is just so far beyond where where Vine kind of like first tread. Like the the there's like just laugh out loud stuff uh that is like super high effort. There's really, really, really funny low effort stuff like uh and and the the community on TikTok is just so active and and part of it is because there's that recommendation thing like you, you everybody is trying to do their best to make broadcast television effectively and that just creates such a different level of energy and it shows yeah, yeah uh, it's have you used bite andrew you you, you brought it up but i, I did, did had you actually gotten a chance to use it yet no, no, I don't even have TikTok. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like passive watch this thing sort of go on kind of thing. And, you know, like looking on the app store, it's number 89 in, you know, social media apps or social networking, which is not uh, for as much attention as it had. It kind of shows that there's not been, it's 3000 reviews, which shows that like, there's not been a lot of momentum for it. Uh, for Byte? So, um, yeah, for Byte, yeah, but. You know, which and leads to the other question is like we're seeing the world out now for for QB for their this is professionally uh -oh, produced uh -oh. short form content. Oh, Quibi uh -oh. and for a quick yeah. bite. Yeah, that means which, less than ten uh, minutes. Yeah, uh, as as I I don't know if we talked about it on this show, but uh, uh, a bit prescient that all five of the ads to introduce Quibi to the masses involve people about to get killed in a big ass way, <laughs> and they have a scant few seconds before total disaster befalls them. At which point they have one thought: Quibi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I uh, uh, my favorite comment on Quibi so far is because Quibi stands for quick bites, then Hulu stands for huge lunch. <laughs> uh, I uh, uh, is it too early to uh, uh, set an over under on when this <laughs> totally explodes? Well, I mean, I mean, we, we, we've already we, uh, Hindenburg esque disaster. We've talked a lot about it on Cord Killers. The thing that will keep Quibi going at least for 12 months is how many um, Astro... It's, I'm going to put question marks around the word AstroTurf, but AstroTurf accounts that are already... That will get Quibi day one, right? Oh, really? All the... What, 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 it was either T-Mobile or Verizon that's giving people Quibi accounts. Like, there, there will be enough free accounts going around that the service will exist. 
And they, because they, the first year they're just going to talk about user numbers and not money, because which, which have we saw and not money with Vessel. This is a carbon exactly. copy of Vessel. Vessel gave away, gave a, a free year of Vessel to everyone, mm -hmm. and with one thing. First of all, what uh, if you don't remember what Vessel did was they they paid all the money in the world to all of the top YouTube uh, channels to intentionally hold back all of their content seven days and allow them to play early on Vessel, which was really convenient if you had. Oh, I don't know, timely news commentary or a weekly giveaway or something like that. Um, compliance was a problem. The uh, uh, There were some people that signed up for the free one year of Vessel, and then they're like, would you pay for it? And then the world was loudly said no. And then they lost, what was it, $150, uh, $170 million or something? Something like that. It was ridiculous. Uh, like, Verizon or, then bought it and well, shut it down because... They also had Go90, which is also, I think, not a thing anymore. Yeah. The uh, vessel, of course, stand, stood for very stossel. <laughs> <laughs> the government says your lunch can only be more than 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I think Quibi will be a rat. There's, there's so much money in Quibi that it can't. It so can then, be a uh, flop and can uh, still uh, eke out for a Christmas year. Day. Christmas. You're banging, you're banging the over on Christmas. Ooh, oh, but longer than Christmas? Yes, I would say yes, longer than Christmas. Yeah, I'll say oh, I'll say the over on that because um, they they have, it'll get uh, somebody somebody will buy it, right? Like if even mm, just to restitch together, there's a lot of content on there with a lot of names. Th there's a there's so much too big to fail in this, both on the creator side because they did attract some big names, but also more importantly from the unfathomable amount of money people are committing for all of this. Right. I mean, they've already sold. They keep selling ad inventory and ad ad slots, but nobody's watched anything yet. And well, so mm -hmm. they're yeah, they got a billion in funding. When you hear a startup or somebody else has sold ad inventory, every major company has a certain amount of our experimental budget. And we've talked about that's like one of the things that happened with Snapchat. A Snapchat sold a bunch of ads. And they went to do their IPO, like, look what we're doing. And like, that was the experimental budget. And then once there wasn't a return on it, they had a decline in that revenue because companies were like, no, we paid you $30 million and we didn't sell four, you know, Toyotas, you know. And so QB will get all of that, you know, experiment. there'll be the experimental budget. But as far as will it, I mean, a billion is a lot of run rate, but I, 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 I thinking like, if we were seeing 10 minute episodic stuff work on YouTube, I'd be like, great. You know, like for big, huge, super produced stuff. I mean, mm. well, okay. Uh, uh, yes to everything except for super produced. It's almost as though people take a successful thing and just say, but what if there was more Chrome on it? Right. Then it would say, and we put it behind a paywall. Which, so nobody because, could even see it. Because 10 minutes is, I, mean, I think you're right, Andrew, in like 10 minutes is what YouTube creators, uh, there's, Lore and a long yep. time has been talked about doing 10 minute videos for various reasons. Well, and, and to be honest, because and it's not the creator's fault, it's the audience's fault because the algorithm says, look, all you all people seem to like 10 minutes videos. And so when, when I hand you a 20 minute video, you don't watch it because you say, "Ooh, that's long. I'll get back to that later. And then you never do. And if I hand it to you too short, you're like, that wasn't tasty enough. But if it's nine minute and 38 seconds, you tend to watch all of it. And then, so that's what the thing serves up. And so the creators tend to try to get close to that 10 minute mark. Well, so, and, and historically there have been plenty of other different ideologies behind 10 minutes, I, but, but, but yeah, no one's been like, doing like, like digital. Well, nobody has been hiring Kiefer Sutherland and Idris Elba and these other mm -hmm. people and paying $7 million for night. Like the rate is like the starting rate's like 7 million for 90 minutes of content or something like that. And that's not even starting what they're paying for. Keith or Sutherland and all that. I mean, they're spending hundreds of millions. We haven't seen that big of a content play on direct to YouTube stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm just, yeah, I, I guess that's my thing is like, I don't like we point out like, well, that, yeah. Like what's the right length? What is it? And, and I think it, it's YouTube's become this, a delivery channel for all kinds of content of all links, but I just, I don't know. I mean, it would be wonderful. It worked. It'd be wonderful. It worked. It'd be wonderful if it worked. I mean, aside from me being going to be really embarrassed about all these queeby jokes I've been making for the last year and a half, yes, sure. It would be great if there was another place that was spending all this money and, and creators were able to get more of their vision out there. Uh, that being said, I think there's even a question of whether or not building your own walled garden is the smartest media play these days. You know, the, the 
the the the marketplace seems to have stabilized uh and there are more and more people even who have successfully created their own uh their own marketplaces that are looking to now sell some of their content back you know like uh, fx I, I, fx I, just made the big deal with 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 hulu like there's well, I, I guess that's the thing you have to look at it. They want this to be the next Netflix or the next Disney Plus. That is what they're trying to build. Is they're trying yes. to build a, a mini Netflix, which just means you need to have that, that environment. Um, I, I understand. I guess my my question is, I don't know whether or not, that is even where, uh, where where some of the smart money is going. But we're gonna find out. Yeah, I don't know. I had a I had a deal at some point I'll be able to talk more about with uh, a, a studio we mentioned within the last hour. You know where they wanted to take one of my books and serialize it into this you know these ten minute sort of chunks, and it was in you know and you know I brought up the question of like because like oh and then we could repurpose it like QB says we want to repurpose it, it could be a feature like movie afterwards. I'm like like I don't I, I I like on paper that sounds great in reality. It sounds like you're gonna have a lot of movies. They're gonna have really awkward pacing. Yeah. Well, yeah. and uh, but I think Hulu. I I wonder about that because Hulu also does. Uh, the Hulu is all paid now, so you can't. There's no free content on Hulu, but they still have to format those TV shows and movies, even the originals that they do, to have ad breaks in them. Um, and mm -hmm. Hulu more or less seems to have figured that out. Um, I I. I wouldn't. I, I. I. think if you. If you're a creator. I. If you're a creator of a Queeby show, and you know that they want it in ten minute chunks, and you know that you have a legitimate, you know, avenue to make a feature length version of whatever this thing is, you will keep in mind the ways that you would cut it and shoot it and edit it, so that you could go back after the fact and piece it together as a feature length thing. Yeah, but maybe, but assuming that there's the financial, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't, a lot of just questions, I guess, in my head, you know, because sure. it's like you're going to have a lot of content that was created along those format. And, sure. but yeah, a billion, a billion dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a, a friend of mine got, the, he had actually Meg Whitman. He was on a conference call with them because they're trying to, they wanted to acquire one of his properties. And he had no idea who she was. It was so funny. Yeah, I talked to somebody named Meg, like Meg, like Meg Whitman, like, you know, eBay, like former, like, you know, presidential candidate and you know to, oh, right. what to be governor of california you know it's like yeah. oh i didn't know i'm like I'm like oh wow um yeah. katzenberg but yeah but i got, think they got they got a lot of executive talent yeah. they've got a lot of money yeah. uh oof. everything else you know smart alec uh, uh dingleberries like me uh you know can laugh and joke about it uh but the rubber's gonna meet the road, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna find out exactly how much people have an appetite to get in on this uh, past the paywall. I will yeah. say, um, so I have I mentioned earlier that I've been in browsing TikTok a bit the past back. I'm been I'm back on the talk. I'm back on the on the talk yeah. saddle. Big and, talk. Um, I find myself. Um, maybe once a day where I'm on the couch and I'm watching something on TV and I see the TikTok app on my phone, I've got my phone open and I see the app and I will just pause what I'm watching on the TV to scroll through TikTok and I'll keep having to hit the button on my remote so the Apple TV doesn't go to sleep, but I'm not done browsing through TikTok yet. I, I think if they can hook in somehow to that addictive nature of short form content, and you know short session binging i think you i think there's i think there's something there i think i don't think it's nothing i mean look uh, it's not nothing guys it's not it's, it's there's it's all about the content yeah you know if if the content is something that is not hampered by or hopefully enhanced by the formatting restrictions then it will succeed TikTok succeeds because it's got an endless flow of people who want who want that corner, right? And and they had musically and they had all these other places that were trying to do similar things and it wound up converging into this kind of supernova and their technology made that better and easier. It made videos sound better, it made videos look better, it made uh, uh you able to do to join a trend a lot easier. Um 
these were technology aiding the content. I don't know if Queeby's uh, format does. My mm. hunch would be it doesn't. Uh, and I I can understand them paying a lot of big money people big money to do some big money content. You know what? Uh, you know what the deal would be. I think I think I know what the killer app for a, a Quibi or a Quibi like service would be. Are you guys ready for this? What's that? Hook into one of these content mills like uh, Viral Hog or America's Funniest Home Videos, which is doing bangers bangers uh, is, is is doing well on bangers, bangers and mash <laughs> doing bangers and mash gov on uh social media including tiktok like there's just yeah afv will just like even barstool sports just posts like not even sports videos but just prank videos or fail videos if you just stitch that together in a 10 a 5 10 minute thing i think it's going to be a big draw for people honestly I think I, but they're, they're, they're the scale and the scale they're trying to go for, like I said, they're, they're trying to build a Netflix level brand and not an aggregator, but like sure. a source of like an entirely new level of content. You can't get anywhere that they want you to go there and go like, I can't, they're, they're doing the fugitive. They have the rights to the future. They're doing the fugitives as a series. Like the, the rights acquisitions on this is insane. And so they're, they're trying to do a billion dollar play and not a mere, not a mere ten million dollar play. Like your your popper idea, Bryce. <laughs> uh, but uh, in like, because people said, is this any different than you know podcasters where they hired the celebrities? Yes and no. It's 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 yes. It's the idea of let's get the people you know onto the platform. It's different that the scale. They're spending tens of millions on content on shows and stuff that that that's never we've never seen that before. Um, mm -hmm. And for a format that we've never, I, I, I'm like, you know, I just sort of wonder like, would they have been better off just saying, we're just going to launch a new streaming service of all original content or something, but would that have made enough noise? I mean, I know I would be more interested in it if it was just because yeah. the names are exciting to me. I like a lot of the names and the people that they have signed on. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they promised a more mobile focused or friendly experience and maybe they had guidelines or you could chop it up into in, into pieces if you wanted but you were able to watch it on your television then like uh, uh i think i would be more interested in it uh, uh but they believe that the format is going to be part of the charm let me let me read you the uh, first two paragraphs in the Verge article. Jeffrey Katzenberg insists that his new video streaming service, QB, isn't competing against Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Peacock, or any other of the streaming services that have launched or launching soon. You've got it all wrong. You're not even asking the right questions. Quote, we don't think we're in the streaming wars, Katzenberg, the former boss of Walt Disney Studios and founder of DreamWorks, tells The Verge in a closed-door meeting the day before the company's grand reveal at a CES keynote. They're all battling for this, he says, as he thrusts his arm towards a TV in the room. We're going for this, he says, gesturing towards his phone. Don't tell them. So, and I'm like, I think I know an awful lot of people that watch those things on their phones. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> You know, I don't know what uh, I think. There's a lot of teens that are watching Stranger Things, or 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 to all the boys I loved before, or The Mandalorian on their phones. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a thing that happens yeah. for a lot of people. Uh, but but you want to know what? I'm not. Look, I didn't start DreamWorks. Uh, I I didn't uh, I didn't run eBay. These are hold very on, hold on. Let me like oh. S. Spielberg, Katzenberg, Jess. Yeah, there's no young in there. Go ahead. Yeah, right. So, uh, uh, look, uh, uh, I, I'd be thrilled if I were just one of those cool kids menacingly putting on my slap bracelet, making fun of the nerd that winds up becoming, uh, you know, the prom king. But, uh, boy, howdy, does this look like a flaming disaster in progress? Yeah, like they're eight dollars for ad free, like. You know, uh, all right. I so, have, I, uh, if, if, if I'm going to judge it by, I was on Netflix when it was DVD by mail, right? Mm -hmm. Love Netflix because it was a a better uh, a version of Blockbuster, and it had this cool little like cultural coup of like, oh, what's on your Netflix queue? I'm going to add this thing to my Netflix queue. Then it was streaming, loved it, totally on board with it. Uh, uh, Hulu, it took. It took shows being exclusive on Hulu for me to sign up. 
I needed to have a, a, a reason to part with my money because of shows that were exclusive to Hulu uh, for me to go for it. Disney Plus, I knew I was going to get it at the moment that they mentioned it, right? All like, right, so it's going to be a slam dunk. I have zero reason why I want Queeby. Let me let me read you this qu line from here, okay? There's a lot of money spent, blah, blah, blah. Brings up Mandalorian. But Mandalorian, but that doesn't worry Katzenberg and Whitman. What have we learned from the Mandalorian? Asked Katzenberg. And man, I, I respect this guy immensely, and I wish I was as fraction as smart, as charismatic as he is. Let me just preface that, say, but saying it. Anyhow, what have we learned from the Mandalorian? Asked Katzenberg. He's in front of a room full of people. We learned a big hit TV show attracts a lot of business. He cracks up the room. It's true. It's obvious. He joins the rest of us in chuckling, adding, sorry, I've been doing this. I get to say this. I've been doing this before you're all effing born. All right. Yeah. That's not an answer. That's IP. not an answer. Yeah. And it was like, why did we, you know, it's, like, it's not just a big TV show. It was <laughs> a big TV show. Yes. That iconic Star Wars poster. There was a tremendous amount of momentum in this multi-billion dollar brand that we wanted something good from. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that I'm like, I look at, I look at the QB homepage and I'm not like going, Ooh, I'm going to watch this. I want to watch that. I'm like, all right, like here's, okay. here's what I'm going to say about Queeby. Looks very crackly. Mm. Yes. Very yes. crackly to me. Cause but crackle the thing had about stuff that I like. Mm -hmm. Crack crackle had like, uh, I think it was like a snatch, uh, a TV show or right. something like, like, like adaptations yeah. that I, I would be otherwise be interested. It's like one of those things where it's like you see a really awesome commercial and then it's like on oh, stars and you're like, well, I guess maybe at some point if I get stars, then I'll watch it. But mm -hmm. like, you know, it's just not it's not for me, Jack. I don't know. It just looks like I, there's a lot of talent on there. But the biggest thing about Queeby that I'm excited about is that there are creators that I like that have secured the bag. I'm very thrilled that very smart man, Jeff Katzenberg, has given a lot of money to people that uh, whose work I enjoy, and at some point, maybe I'll see it in very quick bites. Yeah, I guess, and that's my kind of issue is like Disney Plus. They knew how to launch that because all they had like one of the things I point out uh, if you go through a walk for me through Burbank, which is a media capital of the world in many ways, is pay attention to the billboards and the the bus shelter ads because. They tell you very much how the company's there, how Netflix, everybody else wants to signal themselves. Netflix, and I noticed with Netflix, Netflix advertises Netflix via its shows. Your Stranger Things poster, you see these things for these shows, you go, that show looks interesting. Oh, I gotta get Netflix. When Disney Plus wanted to launch, you saw them doing multiple ads. The Mandalorian was their big, huge ad they were launching with, and then they would do the other ads that showed all the other content that would be on there, The Simpsons and stuff. So you see this thing, you go, oh, that content, I want that. Yeah. What's QB's? I want that. Like, oh shoot! Like, no, that that all subscribe for that. This looks like you know NBC's you know the, the failed pilot lineup. I mean, aren't you excited to watch Survive, um, a show about I a woman who is uh, uh, over a big plane, or a most dangerous yeah. game where they're gonna stab this guy who's standing on a girder? Uh, no, that's. I mean, and they've got like that's. Uh, Liam Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a Hemsworth and a Christoph Waltz, right? Is he the other guy in Most Dangerous Game? Uh, Why I... didn't they put their faces on it? I can't see that. Well, they'll be in the it's trailer. It's a man on a girder. No, no, they're in the trailer. Look, I, I. I almost feel like we should knock this off right now because there's going to be like a full year of us dunking on Queeby. So uh, uh, let's let's let let's go ahead and pack it in for now, and we'll and we'll see where it where it goes. A lot of this looks fine. Yes. What's your what's your Mandalorian? I got to get it. Show. Um, on Queeby or Queeby? Yeah. Yeah. What's the thing that goes? Oh, I'll subscribe for that. I don't. I, there is nothing. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing on Queeby that I have to jump over the the line for. For Hulu, uh, enough people talked about Handmaid's Tale that I went. To, I I I got the ad version, and then I wound up getting the other stuff. Like yeah, Netflix, yeah. obviously, I had forever. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. Dis, uh, Disney Plus, it was like, hey, look, it, it's cultural coup, um, and it's Mandalorian. 
And even now, it's like I, I mean, I haven't watched Disney Plus in a while. I might cancel Disney Plus. Don't make the world back. I canceled it. Yeah, uh, yeah I I'm mean, like, they would what, need. Uh, it would need to be a. It's a. It's a franchise play, right? It's kind of what Netflix did when they get it started getting into original content for their streaming, which was, mm-hmm. let's go after House of Cards. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, the, uh, the Netflix. Uh, and not 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 just House of Cards, which was you know uh, th- their first non licensing thing, but even like Arrested Development, which was a franchise. You know, like it's they need a big windswell around and a beloved thing, and right. what is it well, going to be? Well, how yeah, House of Cards was. Let's show. Let's see how we do original all our own original. Con- let's spend a ton of money to do a thing that doesn't exist elsewhere. Mm-hmm. That you know maybe got turned down at HBO, but whatever. And they put a ton of money and effort into it, and that was sort of their first like, hey, we're gonna take this seriously, not just acquire other properties or do co financing. I mean, all these are co, but let let's go in and go big and do net. Let's be the American presenter for House of Cards, and like, and that was great because you saw the ads for that that looked compelling, that looked really cool, and. Yeah. You know, they followed that up with some other great stuff here. Like, yeah, like, I, I, I just, you know what I they, don't know. Ooh, I, ooh, you know what they can do? Ooh, I think I got it. Maybe I think I, I'm like, ooh, I think I got it. So, and this is because I've been rewatching this, but you know what they could do is make a movie and chop it up into the quick bites for community. Are we that ready? Are we well, ready to finish yeah. the saga of co- of Community? Is Community Aaron, ready for Aaron, its movie? I think Yahoo learned the lesson on that one. Well, Yahoo Screen had a lot of had a lot of issues, but and this and this super crystal clear uh, uh, platform seems <laughs> ripe, right? There's certainly no confusion around Queeby. <laughs> Just saying, look, if there's money to throw around a bad, uh, what will probably all be a bad revival of something. I, I mean, the, the only the only thing I think for that is uh, they would probably want to spend money on the next. It seems like what they, they want to do is is give Dan Harmon the blank check for the next mm. community. They, they yeah. want they, they, they are they are investing in talent. Well, I think they made a deal with like Royal and Harmon actually for a cartoon. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I I would say go buy go look at what properties like franchises are out there that are available. Like I mean, Twenty Search Fox. Like I guess does Disney own Aliens now too? Um, like that would be my kind of thing is to go buy go buy a named property like a big big huge named property. Everybody knows because Community is still an obscure. It was still a small. Its viewership was still small. But go for some big property like hypothetically like let's say aliens was available you know acquire aliens and say oh yeah we're going to be doing an episodic aliens tv show be like oh cool that sounds interesting you know um just buy a name property we know they did the fugitive but the fugitive's not a not a brand name you know you'd have to remind people like oh it's got this history it was a tv show and then it was a Harrison Ford it's, movie it's, and then a, it's- might as well be Peter Pan. It might as well be be a a a a a, 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 a common thing. Like or, or yeah, it's just a trope. Yeah, mm-hmm. but anyhow, yeah, I can see that would be my advice. Is like go buy, make a deal for an existing property. It could be film property or something like that. You know, you know, a Fast and the Furious, which they did the Netflix, I guess, TV series, but something like that. Um, anyhow, Quibi man. Oh. Quibi. Yeah. I again, let's say we let's yeah. not there's gonna be plenty of meat on this boat for the next year. <laughs> yep. All right. Picks. Picks. Hmm. Oh, QB sets up Gloop World Stop Motion series from Rick and Morty's Justin Royland and others. So okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know what? My pick is is uh, is Community. It's on Hulu right now. I've been rewatching it. Uh, I uh, just made my way through the uh, the uh, the infamous fourth season where Dan Harmon uh, was not involved, and it's uh, a wacky, weird, not great season. And I'm excited to see season five and six because the show is very good and it holds up. Uh, Community. Uh, my pick is uh, democracy. <laughs> hey, everybody, go to your primaries and caucuses because I'll be there. What's your next? Um, uh, Vegas. 
Vegas yeah. on the weekend. Saturday is the Nevada caucus, and then South Carolina after that. So I'll be in Columbia and uh, uh, Charleston, and then uh, back to California for Super Tuesday, and then off to Florida for the for for the Florida primary. So um, yeah, democracy, man, hell of an idea. There you go. Get mm. get you some. Andrew sounds a little Greek to me. <laughs> Although I guess I guess Google Forms. Uh, my my pick will be Google Forms because that's apparently how they're gonna run the Nevada caucus. So I like Google Forms. I use it for surveys, and apparently it's good enough for the state Democratic Party of Nevada. <laughs> uh, I will do a technical software pick. I have spent the last week. Uh, building an app in Flutter. And Flutter, for those of you who don't know, is a framework that was created by Google, which allows you to make apps that work on both Android and iOS. And I like writing in Flutter more than I do in Swift, and I've never really played around Java enough to have an opinion about it. There are limitations, but things run natively, so things are super fast when they run in your app. And you know, I've had projects before where you're like, ah, I could build the iPhone version, but I have a lot of Android people be upset with me. And I have been thrilled with this. There is a wonderful course on Udemy, which uh, is available periodically for like $10 or $15, which shows you all about how to do Flutter. And it's about on like a 30 hour course. And, you know, I sat down, I'd done Flutter before, done some tutorials, but I sat down and did that whole thing. Uh, that yeah, the teacher's Angela Yu, and right now the course is only eleven bucks. The complete twenty twenty Flutter development boot camp with Dart. Dart is the language that it uses for that. Um, so yeah, I I we live in an incredible age of it's easy and cheap to learn anything you want to learn. It is just it's out there. There's somebody who'll sell you a course for twelve bucks on how to do it, and you you do it, and then you know how to build things. And so I've been very happy with that. So that's my pick. Learning. Learning is my pick. Nice. Look at that. There it's been after. Hey, there we go, everybody. Good after things. Brian uh, left to go get his kids. Uh, no cord killers this week. Uh, it's President's Day. We're going to be um, honoring the presidents. <laughs> oh, unlike us. <laughs> by, by not talking about uh, about a bunch of stuff, but uh, it'll be cool. We'll be back next week. A uh, ton of more stuff. Better Call Saul will have the first of its new episodes premiered by next Monday, so that'll be cool. Um, yeah, uh, Justin R. Young on Twitch. I'm on Daily Tech News Show. Uh, Andrew Main at Andrew Main, AndrewMain.com. Find out all his apps and Scom.com. Sign up for the video games newsletter. That's right. Uh, but until then, everybody, we'll see you later.